Jesus Christ, really? Don't forget to become a member of Unrelent Gaming's Patreon for exclusive manga content and early access. Isn't that right, Seth? I already joined his Patreon today. Tons of great stuff on there, actually. But did you really have to blow up the city? Mm, yes. You blew up the domino. You blew up the domino and you're laughing. Do you realize the f***ing crisis here? And you will be next. Unless you subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications right now. Or else what? You'll aggressively scream another man's name for several hours? Kakarot! Kakarot! And so as our story involving the resurrected gods of destruction continues to move forward, so too does our extraordinary tale involving our heroes, weaving the fabric of destiny with threads of courage, determination, and the unyielding spirit of Universe 7's strongest warriors, especially now with Universe 16's god of destruction Gardox taking interest in Gohan and his family, with the ominous shadow of Lord Gardox now looming over Gohan and his valiant companions, we are assured a confrontation of cataclysmic proportions, and a testament to the resilience and fortitude of Universe 7's mightiest defenders as we continue to dive deeper into the history and the lore of the ancient destroyers from a long-forgotten time. As our story now begins on Earth, following the initial battle involving our heroes having to face off and defeat Cell Max, as with the unexpected and yet surprising arrival of Universe 15's God of Destruction Gardox being shown confronting Piccolo and Gohan was when Piccolo went on to then respond, Now let's not get too hasty here and allow for cooler heads to prevail, alright? And that includes leaving Pan out of this, so what exactly are you interested in that made you want to come here? With Gardox responding, Well, it's simple, mortals, for I couldn't help but notice an extraordinary surge of power that was emanating from this planet, and it went and piqued my interest in finding out as to what the source of this power was, and so, well now that I'm here, I want to know, has that lazy Beerus really nurtured such formidable beings that rival the level of a destroyer, or could this all simply have been a fluke, Gardox questions, for I find it very hard to believe that a mortal, especially on this insignificant planet, could possess power that draws the attention of a god of destruction. But yet here I am, driven by my own curiosity in finding out, Gardox continues, as it's rare for a god of destruction to take notice of a mortal's power, but if that Beerus truly has mortals who are worthy of rivaling a god in strength, then it's something that I must see with my very own eyes, for I've been longing for a worthy challenger to go up against. So now, why don't you go and tell me as to what had happened on this world that had led to this sudden surge of power, with Pan responding, Don't worry, Papa, he's not as bad as that big scary monster that you all went and fought right now, because he's just a little curious. You don't understand, Pan. Listen, Lord Gardox Gohan responds, The reason on why you were able to sense that sudden surge of power was because we just finished fighting off a monstrous android that went by the name of Cell Max. And well, it was because of his actions that had resulted in forcing us to do what we needed to do, so please let go of my daughter's hand. But then, it was only just when Gohan was then shown having to reach on down in attempting to grab Pan's hand was when Gardox was shown having to pull Pan back and then responding, an android named Cell Max, you say? Interesting. But you didn't answer my question, mortal. For I doubt that it was the android that was emanating such a large energy signature, which only makes me wonder on which one of you it was that was responsible for this power output, Gardox continues. Yeah, 
and I really wish that you were there to see how scary this giant monster was that my papa and the others had to fight off because, well, he was just so big and strong that my papa and Uncle Piccolo were forced to transform, with Gardox responding, forced to transform, huh? Very interesting. Yes. Yeah, so now tell me, was it you? Now, I'm assuming that judging based off your appearance, you must be a Namekian, aren't you? So were you the one that I felt this enormous power come from Gardox questions? Because if you were the source of this energy output, then I want you to show me this power right now, with Piccolo responding, M me But what exactly is it that you want me to show you? Do you intend to fight the source of whatever power it was that you came here looking for? Wait, hold on! Piccolo isn't the one that you are looking for because the power that you likely felt that piqued your curiosity had come from me, Gohan went on to quickly respond. And so there's no need to go and get anyone else involved because I'm the one that you are looking for, with Gardox responding. So, it was your power that I was able to sense all the way from Beerus's planet, huh? Well, this is intriguing, and so now tell me, does this power of yours that you displayed have anything to do with Beerus? I'm curious, were you trained by that lousy house cat, or is this all just a mere coincidence in attempting to mimic the gods? With Gohan responding, well, I can't say that I'm trying to mimic any kind of god, but I was never trained by Lord Beerus either, and I can't tell you on what that power is or where it comes from other than it's simply happening within the moment when fighting off Cell Max. Interesting. Well, you want to know what I think, Gardox went on to then question? I think you're lying to me, because there's no possible way that a mortal as scrawny and nerdy looking as you could ever reach a destroyer's power alone, and so I think that you were trained by Beerus, am I right? Well, just so you know, I don't like Beerus, Gardox continues, and when I found out that Beerus had mocked my destruction following my universe's erasure, I from there on made a vow to make him pay for what he said about me, and so are you his student? Well, whatever your business is with Lord Beerus, Gohan responds, has nothing to do with me, and I'm not lying to you either. I was never asked, nor did I ever volunteer to be trained by Lord Beerus, so with all due respect, whatever it is that you're looking to do, you can go and take up with Lord Beerus, Gohan continues, for we have been through enough as it is today, so if you're looking for a challenge against those who were and have been training on Lord Beerus's planet, then you will go and find my father and Vegeta over there for you to go and talk to if you have any questions, Gohan went on to then walk towards Pan. So in the meantime, don't come anywhere near my daughter and leave us all alone. I don't intend to fight you, nor am I the right person for you to view as a rival, so please leave us all alone. Well, this was certainly an unexpected and dare I even say a very rude answer, Lord Gardox. Angel Vodka went on to then respond. So do you wish for us to take our leave and head back onto Lord Beerus's world so that way we may speak to this Goku and Vegeta with Gardox responding, Actually, Vodkel, I think we'll stay just a tad bit longer as I want to make one thing perfectly clear to you, mortal. Your refusal to do as I instruct along with your audacity to redirect me to Beerus is a direct challenge to my authority, Gardox went on to then continue. So I hope you realize on whom you are speaking with, mortal, with Gohan responding, With all due respect, let go of my arm, with Gardox responding, You are in no position, nor do you have the authority to issue any kind of directive to a god of destruction, mortal. For my notoriety as being one of the most unforgiving and vile gods of destruction is not just for show either. And in order for you to get a sense of being able to understand this fact, I'll have to show you. And so now let this serve as a reminder, just as Beerus had once reminded me of the old saying, better him than me, right mortal? In which upon initial contact with Gardox being shown having to tap Gohan in the chest and having to send him flying outwards was when Piccolo then went on to shout, Oh no, damn it, Gohan, are you alright? Oh, I was worried that it would come down to this and we're not even fully healed, especially when coming out of that fight against Cell Max either. Oh, listen, Gohan, even though this wasn't something that we had been expecting, we've got no other choice but to stand our ground here and not allow for anything to happen until we can figure out a plan, so can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I hear you, Piccolo Gohan went on to emerge from the rubble. And it looks like whatever his problem is with Lord Beerus is something that he's looking to try and take
take out on us as payback. Wait, what's he about to do with Pan? As Garnox went on to address Pan by then responding, Say there, little girl, since you and I are now the bestest of best friends, what do you say I go and show you a really cool magic trick, huh? You do, of course, like magic, don't you? Well, take a look at this right here, Gardox went on to hold out. Do you see this giant sheet that I'm holding here? Well, best friend, how's about we go and make your daddy disappear for a moment and see if he could find his way back out to us, huh? Doesn't that sound like a really electrifying idea? But Gohan was not having it because despite with Gohan now being shown dashing directly towards Gardox was when Gohan then went on to shout, you leave my little Pan out of this! Get away from him right now, Pan! Well, my papa does love magic tricks, Pan responds, almost as much as I do, but will my papa be okay with you showing him? With Gardox responding, oh, don't you worry, little friend, for I'm sure that your papa will love every bit of it. Now watch and pay close attention. Oh no, Gohan, whatever you do, do not come in contact with that thing, Piccolo then went on to quickly shout. He's going to try and trap you with Gardox responding well it's like your flimsy destroyer Beerus once said better you than me right mortal and so I do sure hope that you are able to channel more of that special power of yours if you wish to break free and well ta-da and he's gone you see so how do you like it Gardox went on to question pretty cool wasn't it with Pan responding wow that was awesome and now my papa's like a ghost under there but Will he be okay because my papa doesn't look too happy right now with Gardox responding, Oh, don't you worry about your daddy, kiddo. And besides, by his own claims, your father should be strong enough to find his way out of my little magic trap. But just in case he doesn't, then what do you think will make your daddy angry enough to the point where he will go and show me his full power? Any ideas, friend? That's enough! Why are you doing this? Piccolo went on to then shop by dashing towards Gardox. Have you lost your mind or what? Stop this and get away from the girl. There's no need to do this. Well, there may be no need for you to do this and get involved, Gardox responds, but for me, this is exactly what it was that I wanted, Namekian. Now do yourself a favor and go join your friend over there while I attend to my little friend over here, Gardox went on to strike Piccolo by responding, for you are all just as stubborn as Beerus is. In which upon the moment of contact with Piccolo's body shown having to crash into Gohan's while he was wrapped up in the white sheet that Gardox had thrown was when Gohan then went on to utter, oh, hang on Piccolo, I'll try and break us out of this. To which as Gohan was now able to narrowly be shown doing was when Gardox then went on to respond, well, well, would you look at that? It seems as though there might be something here with this mortal after all, since he was able to break through my goblin's trick so fast. Hey, what's going on with my papa and Uncle Piccolo over there, Pan went on to question. They don't look like they're having any sort of fun and it looks like they're hurt, too. Oh, don't you worry about them. They're actually having so much fun that it looks like they're in trouble when in actuality your father and that Namekian are doing just fine, kiddo. Trust me, Gardox responds. And since your father appears to be wasting my time by not showing me the true extent of his destroyer rivaling power that Beerus had trained him to wield, what do you say I show you a very magical place that I just know you are going to love? So go on here. Have a look for yourself, Gardox went on to spawn a pot by responding. Come now, don't be afraid, little one. Inside this pot lies the gateway to incredible worlds, places filled with wonders and excitement, Gardox continues. Just take a quick look and I'll show you such magical sights that most mortals could only ever dream of, best friend. Magical worlds and fun places, Pan questions. You mean like amusement parks that have all sorts of fun rides that me and Papa and Uncle Piccolo can go and ride on with Angel Vod 
Michael having to chime in. Now, now, don't be scared, little one, as you wouldn't want to go and anger Lord Gardox, for he is known for having a very short temper. However, I do promise that you'll be safe no matter where it is that Lord Gardox decides to take you. Now, as I'm sure that, um, your friend here is more than interested in your father than anything else, Vodko continues, which is why I'm sure that Lord Gardox wants to go and take you up for a ride before this day is through. Oh, what, what in the world did he just go and use on us, Gohan went on to question. Oh, no. <laughs> Get away from him, Pan. What is he showing her over there? And why do I feel so drained after being caught up within that thing? Oh, P Piccolo, are you okay? Get up, Piccolo. We're left with no other choice than to deal with this guy here and now, Piccolo. Oh, don't, don't look inside of that thing, Pan. With Pan having to then question, are there lots of really fun rides and cotton candy to eat over there too? With Gardox having to redirect his pot by then responding, Oh yes, all the rides that you can ride and all of the candy that you can eat, little one. And it all waits patiently for you as all you'll need to do is just look inside and there we are. In you go, little one. To which as Pan's entire body was then shown making its way and having to be teleported within the pot was when Gardox then went on to continue. Well, that was much easier than I thought, but now do you see what true pain feels like, mortal? And since Beerus once thought that it was amusing to watch something be taken away from me, I only now find it more than fitting to go and take something from you. As your daughter is my pawn now, and if you have any hope of getting her back, then you'll have to play a little game. For if you want your daughter back, then you'll have to prove yourself, and so come and play my game if you dare. With Dr. Hedo having to utter, D Did he just seriously do what I think he just did? But that's just horrible. She's gone. And he baited her into looking inside of that pot, and now she's completely vanished. Oh, that's just terrible. Now, have you lost your mind? Bulma went on to shout. That's a child. What did you just do to Pan? Where did you just take her? Oh, how could you? She's completely gone, Gamma One responds, for I can't detect her life energy anywhere, so she must have been transported somewhere, with Gohan having to then shout, Pan! What have you done, you spoilless coward? Where is she? Where did you send my daughter, Destroyer? Answer me right now! Gohan, I can't send her energy anywhere, Piccolo went on to respond, which probably means that she's likely off-world. So while I refuse to believe that Beerus had zero influence over any of you in allowing for there to at least be one mortal that exists who can rival the might of a god, Gardox went on to then respond. And as Beerus wallows in his own defeat and self-pity back on his planet by the hands of Lord Reno, I figured what better way to further add insult to injury than by tearing his universe apart from the inside. But don't worry, for your daughter is still alive, but to get to her, you'll first need to complete my little game, which you'll soon come to realize that it won't be so easy for you to do. And so we'll call this game the Three Stages of Hell, each with its own unique challenge that will only bring you ever so closer in saving your daughter. Failure to comply or losing as a result will mean automatic death. Sounds easy enough, doesn't it? So how is about we kick things off with a warm-up first, eh? So let's start by seeing if you're fast enough to catch up and follow us to our preferred destination. And if you can somehow manage to endure, then we'll begin with the first phase of our game, Gardox continues. Maybe that ought to show me what Beerus' mortals around here are truly all about once I start kicking each of them into overdrive. You ready? Why, you? If she so is even loses a single hair on her head, I am going to rip you to pieces. I can feel that power of yours beginning to flare back up again, Gohan Piccolo went on to utter. We can't run the risk of falling behind, so we'll need to act fast, Gohan. Right, so let's see if you have what it takes to fight for your daughter's freedom, mortal. And as Beerus loves to put it, better you than me, right? Say in, ta-ta, mighty man. To which the very moment Gardox and his angel were then shown having to leave,
leave the planet with Gohan in hot pursuit was when Piccolo quickly went on to then shout, Oh no! Hurry, Gohan! I'll be right behind you! We can't let them escape! In which, fortunately enough, with Gohan successfully being shown having to latch onto the angel's leg, with Piccolo extending his arms and latching onto Gohan's legs, was when Gohan then went on to shout, No! Not on my watch! You won't! Hang on, Pan! Gotcha! I'm right behind you, Gohan! Just hold on and hang on tight no matter what happens, Piccolo! As long as you stay close by me, we'll be able to reach their targeted destination! Well, so much for your early warm-up and seeing if these mortals would make it, Angel Vodka went on to chime in, because they both appear to be very dedicated, especially the one that the Namekian refers to as Gohan in saving his daughter, my lord, with Gardox being shown looking on down and responding, Oh, good, just as I hoped would be the case, and so now let's go for a ride as we venture back home into my universe. So for their sake, they better hold on tight or they just might end up drifting out within the voids of space. Yes, and if Beerus's lazy universe truly does happen to house mortals who are relative to a destroyer, then I'm going to make sure that I get as much out of this entire ordeal as I possibly can. As Officer Krillin then went on to respond, Oh man, and here I thought that dealing with that crazy Cell Max was bad, but things just keep going from bad to worse with no end in sight. And so now what are we all going to do? Because we can't just go after Well, of course we can't just go and chase after them, Krillin Boma went on to shout. So what do you mean, what are we going to do? Come and help me look for Whis's communicator device so that we can go and contact Vegeta, Goku, and Beerus right now. So hurry it up because we can't waste any more time. You know, I must say, your victory over Lord Cobras is nothing short of remarkable, Vegeta. For it's not every day that a mortal is shown besting a god of destruction like that in battle, so I must admit that I am rather very impressed that you were able to go and do it. And so how do you feel after such a monumental victory and acknowledgement, with Vegeta responding, Well, facing off against such a formidable opponent was by far no easy task for me to manage, as his control over destruction was certainly far greater when compared to mine, which had only then forced me to rethink my strategy during the middle of our battle. And while his power felt overwhelming at times, Vegeta continues, it was his skillful use of his power that had posed the real challenge, so I had to disrupt his focus and attack him psychologically to gain the advantage because if I didn't, well then he likely would have overtaken me completely and destroyed me during our second battle, with Whis responding, and so you went and did exactly as Lord Beerus had instructed for you to do, which was to allow yourself to always keep your mind on destruction while throwing Lord Cobras off of his by getting him to focus more on his emotions rather than the art of destruction itself. For it's a very rare case if I may add, but a very smart battle strategy indeed, Vegeta, with Vegeta responding, it was, but I know that this isn't over between us, for I must continue to train and hone my destructive powers if I wish to stand a better chance the next time we fight. As I know that there is more for me to achieve, so I can't let this victory be what gets to my head, especially now. Which, speaking of Lord Beerus, did something happen while I was away? Vegeta went on to question. He looked as though there was something that was bothering him, on top of the fact that he also looked as though he was involved in some kind of a fight. So did something happen to him while I was away in Universe 14? For he appeared very angry, but also very quiet, which is quite unusual of Lord Beerus, Vegeta continues. And especially during situations like the one that had taken place here with Cobras, so did I happen to miss something or what? With Whis responding, well, there's quite a lot for us to unpack here while you've been away, but Lord Beerus is currently over there, Whis went on to point out, for I'd assume that he wishes not to be bothered at this time, for while you were taken within Universe 14, there were several significant developments that had taken place here, with Universe 13's God of Destruction Reno being one of them, and as he arrived with a special sanction from the Grand Priest in challenging Lord Beerus to a battle which was a confrontation that was quite unprecedented and unexpected to say the least, and so while giving it his best with such short notice, Lord Reno didn't just defeat Lord Beerus, but had went as far as to force him into submission in front of the other resurrected gods of destruction, which was a sight that was rather unsettling for all those who had witnessed, especially for Lord Beerus once it was all said and done. Wait, are you serious? Vegeta went on to then question. So Universe 13's destroyer was actually given the green light to go and fight Lord Beerus and he actually beat him in front of the other revived gods of destruction as well? But how did this happen? I thought Lord Beerus was supposed to be one of the strongest destroyers among 
among the entire lineup. And so what happened with Whis responding, well, he was, but over the years with Lord Beerus glossing over and overlooking his training along with focusing on other things, as he allowed for his lazy nature to get the better of him and causing him to forget about his title mostly, but I do have a feeling that this won't be the case with him for long, and especially if what my gut is telling me is true, then I'm pretty sure that this was exactly what Lord Beerus had needed in order to get him back into prime condition. Yeah, it was honestly pretty rough to watch Lord Beerus go down the way he did Goku and onto the ad, but he also had seemed to give off this really weird sense of tension as I'm not really sure on what Lord Beerus plans to go and do now, but is it me or did you guys happen to also sense that strange energy signature that appeared from out of nowhere too? And well, because I'm not really sure on what to make of it since there was so much that was going on around here at once, but it kind of felt like it was coming from Earth as well. Did anyone else happen to feel that? With Broly having to then chime in, you weren't the only one who went and sensed that because I went and sensed it too. And while it happened within the moment, it felt like it came from a Saiyan. With Goku responding, you think it came from a Saiyan, but the only Saiyan that I would figure for a power like that to come from would be Gohan, but well, I never felt a power like that come from Gohan before, so do you think something happened back on Earth with Whis having to then respond? Well, actually, come to think of it, I did happen to sense something that appeared to be coming from planet Earth as well, so maybe we should, but then, it was yet again now from out of nowhere with a gigantic burst being shown having to happen behind Whis was when Whis then went on to continue, No, oh dear, well I guess and went and spoke too soon now, didn't I? And as I wonder now on who that could be, well today sure seems to have been an eventful day for us here now, hasn't it? Oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me, Vegeta then went on to quickly shout. Don't tell me that more of these destroyers are coming here now, and just what the hell is going on around here today? With Goku responding. Oh, great. Well, I'm hoping that this isn't another one of those really angry gods like that Lord Primos destroyer, cuz well, he nearly went and started a fight with Broly. Oh, we can't seem to catch a break around here since these destroyers have been revived. Oh, and so hang on, guys. But then, it was only to the sudden shock and surprise of everyone there where the entities that were shown having to arrive were none other than Universe 6's Champa and Vados as Champa went on to then respond. Well, 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 I just had to come and see it for myself to believe it, but I hope that we're not too late for the party. And so now, where is he? Because I don't seem to see my loudmouth brother anywhere, Vados, but is it true, Whis? Of all the times that I could have been there to witness something, this has to without a doubt be a moment that i just die to see unfold. And so are we late? With Goku then having to chime in, hey, wait a minute, that isn't one of those newly revived gods of destruction from earlier? That's Lord Champa. What's Lord Champa? But what could Champa want by coming here, Vegeta questions, as Whis went on to then respond, well, this is most certainly an unexpected but yet welcoming surprise. And then so greetings, Lord Champa. It's so good to see you again, as I do recall the last time that we were shown having to see each other was during the event of the Tournament of Power. And so it's good to see you. Now, what do I owe you the pleasure of here today, Lord Champa? For I assume that you are here to simply come and say hello with Champa responding, you've never been one to lie, Wee, so I trust that you can point me into the direction on showing me where my lousy no good brother Beerus is at the moment and make it quick. No, hey there Lord Champa, Goku went on to wave by shouting, and it's been a really long time since we saw you and so it's really good to see you again, and so I really hope that you know that we haven't forgotten about your universe either because we're really looking forward to fighting them all again one day, and hopefully it's one day soon with Champa responding Oh, it's you again How could I forget? Oh, why are you always on Beerus' planet, Saiyan? Don't you have anything else better to do than to always want to fight someone or cause some kind of a multiversal catastrophe? So you're supposed to be another one of those gods of destruction too? Broly went on to approach by looking on down and pointing You don't look like much of a destroyer You look just like that other cat, uh, Lord Beerus But you're much fatter than he is and much more pudgy looking with an irritated Champa responding What did you just say to me? Are you serious? Is he serious? How dare you? And just who in the Yemma are you supposed to be? I don't ever recall seeing this big stupid face at either of our tournaments so how dare you disrespect me? Eh, sorry about that Lord Champa but he's 
kind of new to the whole gods thing Goku went on to quickly butt in. But this here is Broly and he's a Saiyan too, just like me and Vegeta. And so don't worry about him, Broly doesn't mean any harm by what he said, you know? Another Saiyan? Uh, well, I don't care, you hear me? So you're lucky that I'm here to laugh at my brother, otherwise you two would get it. And so now where is he? And as I didn't come here to be insulted by idiots, and so now where's Beerus? Although I would advise for you to watch what you say around Lord Beerus, especially now after what was shown having to take place here. But if you really want to know, then he is currently over there in his home where I'd assume he is prepping as he looks to make his next move. With Champa responding, Prepping, huh? Then the rumors going around of how badly Lord Reno had beaten him must have really fired him up then. And especially if he's contemplating something, with Vados having to chime in. Right, and I second this, as you should know firsthand on just how serious and just how dangerous your brother Lord Beerus can be, and especially when he finds himself being driven towards something with cause, and so I wonder as to what he'll do next. Yeah, well I can't say that I'm surprised, Champa went on to then continue, and especially since I always try to tell Beerus that someone was going to come along and shut that big stupid mouth of his, and so for his sake he better be thankful that it wasn't me who went in, but then it was once again now from out of nowhere with a giant burst now being shown having to occur behind Vados and Champa was when Vados then went on to chime in. Oh, and what's this? Well, it looks as though we may not be the only visitors who intended on coming here after all. In which, surprisingly enough, now from out of nowhere having to come back onto Beerus' planet was none other than the Angel of Universe 15 that went by the name of Rizal, as Rizal went on to then respond, Ah, but of course, I knew that I had sensed your life force on this planet, sister. It's been a very long time now, hasn't it, Vados? Yes. Ah, good. So Beerus' mortals are both still here with, of course, the addition of a third, I see. No, and hello again there, Whis. It's so tragic to hear about what happened to poor old Beerus, and as I do hope that he is able to get well soon, because Lord Ferrix certainly does look forward in having a few words with him, but of course, that's not why I'm here, actually, so it's better if I just go and cut to the chase, then Rizal continues. Hey, I remember that Angel Chompa went on to then respond, and as I can't seem to recall the last time that I had gone as far as to see him, let alone hear Lord Ferrix's name either, so what could he possibly be doing here? With Whis responding, well that's a bit strange, as you were just here, Rizal, and so now tell us on why you have returned, with Angel Rizal responding, well although Lord Ferrix has some, well, dare I say, unresolved issues with Lord Beerus, he is not the reason actually on why I have returned, but in fact, Lord Ferrix requests for Lord Beerus's mortals to report back with me into Universe 6 right this moment, Rizal continues. And now as to why, well, I'll just leave that up to Lord Ferrix to decide, but I am here simply to bring the mortals into the 16th universe immediately. In which during this time when venturing back on over and seeing Gohan and Piccolo now arrive within universe 15 was when Angel Vodko then went on to respond, Alright, there we are now, as I didn't expect for our trip back from universe 7 to be so quick, but nevertheless, I welcome you mortals both to Lord Gar Ardox's domain, or as he would famously phrase it, the world of magic and despair. Oh, and do make sure to watch your step when roaming around here, Vatko continues by the way, for you might want to go and take a look around you for context, with Gohan having to then respond, Hey, are you alright, Piccolo? I wasn't expecting for you to grab on when you did, but thanks for coming here with me and tracking that bastard down. Yeah, don't sweat it, Piccolo responds. So I'm fine, but we need to hurry and start looking for Pan immediately, with Gohan then having to question, Right, hey you, where's Lord Gardox and where did he go and take my daughter? Because if I'm the one that he wants, then he could let my daughter go and come handle business with me instead, with Vatko responding, Now although I understand your frustrations as a father, if Lord Gardox intends for you to earn your way back into getting her from him, then you must prove it, with Vatko continuing, But do rest assured that she will be under my watchful eye during your stay. However, it's important to note that you must comply with Lord Gardox's rules and the tales that he lays out for 
you if you wish to ensure your daughter's safety. And while Pan remains fine for now, her continued safety hinges on Gohan's performance. Almost kind of like a binding agreement, and deviation from it could have dire consequences, mortals. And while I don't have a personal gripe with Universe 7's God of Destruction, Lord Gardox, on the other hand, does. And it's because of their long and rich history, especially after Gardox was previously destroyed as I remained inactive, that Lord Gardox had learned of Beerus' hurtful and condescending words, that he now looks to do almost anything and everything that he could just to simply get back and hurt Lord Beerus in any possible way that he can, even if that means going as far as hurting his strongest and most valuable mortals to achieve it, with Piccolo responding, and all of this because of how Lord Beerus had talked about him after he was destroyed? And just how low can this God of Destruction go if he's willing to run the risk of getting innocent children involved, with Gohan responding, he's completely out of his mind is what he is? And so do you see anything, Piccolo? Because I can't seem to get a lock on Pan's energy anywhere. And so how do we know that Pan is even out here to begin with if the only thing that we seem to be looking at here are volcanoes and molten lava everywhere? Well, color me green. You two numbskulls actually made it, Gardox went on to then respond. Up here, Universe 7. Welcome to my universe, mortals, because now that you're both here, and especially you, Mr. I was in trained by Beerus, as now the game can finally begin. Look, there they are, Gohan went on to respond. Pan! Don't worry, I'll be right over there, so just sit tight! Well, I wouldn't go that far if I were you, because we have yet to start our three stages of Hell game, so listen closely. Now, to earn your freedom and reach your daughter, you must pass all three of the challenges that I've designed for you, Gohan, and, well, I guess since the Namekian is here too, you can use him as backup because you're going to need it either way. Oh, and just for the record without giving too much away, each of these three stages, assuming that you even get past one, will essentially mirror the emotional struggles that you've endured in having you relive your most troubling experiences, Gardox continues. And as you see, the first stage will be timed in seeing how fast you are able to break free and survive, while the final two stages will ensure that you are tested to the highest possible degree. And if you somehow manage to prove your worth and complete my game, then I'll award you a prize and go and set you all free. Sound good? I mean, I kind of feel bad for you in a way, but hey, it's like Beerus often said, better him than me, right, Papa Gohan? Hiya, Papa! Look here, Pan went on to then respond. Mr. Green is showing me his really awesome collection of playing cards with Gardox continuing. Oh, and don't worry about the girl, for she'll be right here waiting for you in case you happen to actually pass with flying colors. And so now, are the two of you ready for the games to begin? Because I certainly am, for it's been a while since I actually had guests on my planet like this, and so I'm ready whenever you are. Go on, listen, Pan is completely unaware of the danger that she is in, for she doesn't understand that this little god of destruction is lying to her and making her actually believe that he's her friend. And on top of it, I think he's using some kind of a hypnotic technique in going as far as to warp her mind into thinking that he he's actually her friend, when he's only using her as bait to draw you into his sick game, Piccolo continues. So we've got to go all out here and leave nothing behind so that way we can go back home, as Gardox went on to then continue. Now let's see on which card we will go and use first. Ooh, I think this one ought to be a good enough stage for these mortals to go and experience first. And not to mention the color on this guy here, for I didn't know their history dates all the way back to when this Gohan was a kid? Well, this ought to be good, and to top it all off lastly, since I'm feeling a bit spicy here, I'll go and give them five minutes to complete stage one of our game, which is more than enough time for me to go and watch them fail. Oh, hold on now, and what's this? Gardox questions. In which with Piccolo and Gohan not looking to waste any more time by from there being shown having to unleash their most powerful transformations was when Gardox then went on to continue. Wait a minute, could that be the power that I had sensed on B? Beerus's world? Yes, but of course, so this mortal was in fact telling the truth. For that there is the exact same energy that I felt back in Universe 7. So Beerus's universe does in fact happen to house mortals who can be compared to a destroyer in power. Well, now you have my attention, mortal. But I doubt that you'll actually be cunning and skillful enough 
to survive what's coming with Orange Piccolo and Beast Gohan then shown charging towards Gardox with Gohan shouting, The hell with your stupid games, Destroyer! So give my daughter back to me right now and I'll gladly give you what you've been asking for with Orange Piccolo then shouting, Now leave the little one out of this and come and see what we're all about if you're that obsessed with getting back at Lord Beerus, Destroyer! Hey, Mr. Green, Pan went on to then ask, Why are my papa and Uncle Piccolo so angry at you? You said that they would have a lot of fun, but they don't look like they're having any fun at all. So why do they want me to get away from you? With Gardox responding, Now they're just jealous, kid. Now keep quiet and watch as they undergo stage number one. In which from out of nowhere now, with one of Gardox's cards now being shown having to glow as Gohan and Piccolo made their way towards it, was when Gardox then went on to continue, Well, all right now, mortals. And here we go. And so good luck. And remember, you only have five minutes to find your way out and break free before time runs out, as survival entails on finding your way back or destroying your enemy, and so now enjoy! In which moments after, with Gohan and Piccolo now seemingly having to find themselves exactly where they were shown having to meet Gardox back on Earth, was when Gohan then went on to question, what? what Where are we? What just happened? Hold on. Wait a minute. Are we back where we just were after destroying Cell Max on Earth? Earth? But why would he go and bring us both back to the Red Ribbon headquarters for? With Piccolo responding, I don't think he did. This may in fact look and feel like planet Earth, but let's not gloss over the fact that this destroyer is not above creating a false reality as a part of his twisted game, as this could very well be a trap for all we know, Piccolo continues. And so either that, or he probably sent us both into a parallel reality, in which either way, let's try and stay sharp and unravel the first of his three stages because we only have five minutes and we can't afford to but then it was only from out of nowhere with a straight energy blast now shown colliding with piccolo was when gohan then went on to shout what in the world oh no piccolo piccolo are you all right oh and just where in the world did that blast just come from and it was dangerously accurate and incredibly dense too oh talk to me piccolo are you okay with piccolo responding hurry gohan we we don't have time. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting something a familiar voice went on to then question? Because here I was starting to wonder on when you were going to show your face. And especially now since you're all that's left after destroying your father, Vegeta, and Broly, monkey. Oh, what's wrong, Gohan? You look like you've seen a ghost. With the surprised Gohan being shown turning his head and responding, no, but that's impossible. Is that that really you, Frieza? But it just can't be. And that form and power. What is this? And what do you mean by all that's left? What did you go and do to the others, Frieza? Oh, haven't you heard? They're all dead, Black Frieza responds. Or perhaps you weren't around when I went and slaughtered them all in this world. Or maybe you're just a mere reflection from another time. Well, either way, now that you are all that's left who is standing in my way aside from that tin can of an android down there, here is where your final chapter in our very long story ends, Saiyan. And even though this new form of yours is unknown to me, the form and power which you see here standing before you is far more superior than yours. But I'm in no hurry, Frieza continues, as I intend to make you suffer just like your father had suffered. And so what do you say we go and pursue as fate had intended, and finally put our historic story to rest, Gohan. Oh, this is just insane. I can't believe that God of Destruction would go and send us both into a timeline where Frieza, of all people, would not only go and find a new form that surpasses ours, but as well as reign supreme over everyone by somehow managing to find a way to wipe away Goku, Broly, and Vegeta. And I never would have imagined that I'd see a reality where Frieza would stand victorious over us like this, but we have to hurry. Because as long as Lord Gardox has us both on a timer against Frieza, then the more time that we waste, the greater the odds are of us failing. 
And with Lord Gardox's manipulation of time and reality being used against us, Piccolo continues, he mentioned that in order for us to power through and complete the first stage, we'd need to either defeat Frieza or find a way to break through in making our way back to Universe 15. But how is the question? Oh, you there, Gamma 1, Piccolo then went on to shout. Are you alright? What happened here? When did Frieza arrive and what did he do? Can you still go? Are you still able to fight or not? With an alternative Gamma 1 responding, y you and Gohan both suddenly vanished before Cell Max was destroyed and shortly after this, Frieza appeared and wiped everyone out, including Gamma 2 and Dr. Hedo, Gamma 1 continues. And after he destroyed Cell Max, he saved me for last until you both reappeared again. Oh, so I was right about what I said. That little runt of a destroyer went and somehow was able to gather as much information about us that he could before going and sending us both into an alternate world to face Frieza. Oh, but we'll deal with him when we can because we've got about four and a half minutes left to make a difference here, otherwise we're goners. In which, in the meantime, up above in the sky, as Black Frieza was then shown having to battle against Beast Gohan, was when Beast Gohan went on to fight off Black Frieza by then questioning, Oh, what did you go and do to the others, Frieza? Just what did you do to my father and the others, and just what in the world is this new form that you're wielding? You shouldn't be able to fight back like this, nor should you be as strong as you are, so what did you do? Answer me right now, Frieza! With Black Frieza responding, Well, isn't it just legendary, Saiyan? For I went and simply did what you monkeys would normally go and do. As I went and put myself through 10 years worth of training within a hidden time chamber that I came across. And well, well, the rest is just history, just as it was when I destroyed your father, Broly, and Vegeta, Saiyan. But I must admit and say that, however, this new power of yours that you are using against me is certainly a level of strength that I did not think would be something that you would achieve. And especially to see you actually be strong enough to fight my black form off like this, Frieza went on to then continue. So now tell me, what exactly is this new form of yours, boy? The ten years within some hidden time chamber, Gohan questions? But you shouldn't be here, Frieza! And if you must know, this is my ultimate power brought forward onto to the surface, Gohan continues, for it's the very nature of who I am after fighting Cell Max, and just like him, I cannot let you go and have your way with any more people. I have to find a way to overcome you, especially if this was what that God of Destruction had wanted for me to go and do in order for me to go and get my daughter back. Your daughter, Frieza went on to then surprisingly question. You should be more concerned with what I'm about to go and do to you here and now, rather than focusing on what some god of destruction has ordered for you to go and get done, Saiyan. And so what's wrong? Are you tired? With Gohan responding, Oh, leave my little pan out of this, Frieza! Oh, and how did you know that I'm not at full power? I can see it in your eyes, that's how I know, monkey. You're starting to lose it, aren't you? That fire that drives you and that hunger for battle. You never had it within you to be anything like your father and Vegeta were, now do you? Well, you don't. And that is why you are weak, Saiyan. And so whether you were sent here on behalf of some god of destruction or if you willingly decided to insert yourself on behalf of honoring your father's legacy, one way or another, I will destroy you, Gohan. Just as I should have destroyed you all those years ago on planet Namek, and when I made my return to Earth and nearly ended you before your father had arrived. And unless you plan on showing me what the decades following our first encounter have done to evolve your power, Frieza continues, then you are as good as dead to me, monkey. In which, fortunately enough, with Gohan being shown getting knocked on down and having to stabilize himself before hitting the ground was when Orange Piccolo then went on to chime in. Hold on to your strength from within, Gohan! Do not let Frieza tear you apart 
apart from the inside. And especially with the limited amount of time that we have to conquer that God of Destruction's first stage of hell. So are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. So what's the plan, Gohan questions? Well, at this rate, we'll never be able to beat the clock that Lord Gardok set forward for this first stage, which only goes as far as to tell me that he knew what he was doing when he brought us here, Piccolo continues. And even though it doesn't help that Cell Max had worn us both down before agreeing to any of this, or if we can't find a way to beat this Black Frieza, then we'll need to try and find another way around him, Piccolo went on to then continue. Remember that God of Destruction mentioned on how we needed to break free and survive, right? Which only means that we don't have to destroy Frieza in order to go back into Universe 15 again, but instead, if we can go as far as to find a way to disrupt this matrix that he's placed us in without dying by Frieza's hands, will that only ensure that we'll be able to clear through the first stage, Piccolo continues. And so it's a long shot, but we only have about four minutes left until stage one is over, so this is my idea. Go and try and hold his attention for just a few moments while I ready up the special beam cannon when he's not looking. From there, if we can power our way through and have you hit him with even more power on top of that, then the power overload should be enough to shatter through this matrix that Lord Gardox had placed us in and return back to Universe 15 with Beast Gohan responding, Right, so let's hurry because Pan needs our help, Piccolo, to which as Gohan was then shown dashing towards Frieza was when Gohan then went on to shout, Hey! Over here, Frieza! You and this so-called new and overbloated form of yours doesn't scare me! Oh, here goes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Special beam. In which upon impact with Beast Gohan now shown having to punch Frieza in the stomach was when Gohan then went on to continue. You should know better than anyone that I'm not just anyone for you to go and overlook, Frieza. And especially with the amount of history that you and I both share and therefore, I know that it's really you who is pulling all of the strings behind the scenes, Lord Gardox. And so by using Frieza and whatever this new power of his is to try and stop me will ultimately backfire. You hear me, Frieza? And it backfired on you then, and I'll make sure good and well that it backfires on you now, and especially if there is anything that comes in the way of getting to my little pan, you monster. Oh, you dirty Saiyan. Your father thought the same thing, and look where that had gotten him, Frieza went on to then shout. Man, just who in the hell are you talking to, monkey? Who is this god of destruction that you keep talking about? Are you talking about Beerus? I'm sure that it is, Frieza, but wouldn't you love to know? Because I'm pretty sure that you'd love that now, wouldn't you? Then it is that wretched Beerus, isn't it? Frieza went on to block off Gohan's kick by questioning. Well, either way, none of you will make it off this planet alive by the time this day is over between you and I, Saiyan. Oh, we'll see about that, Frieza. And if what you're displaying out here again me is truly what you've been doing within the shadows and behind our backs, then you can mark my words when I say that once we're done dealing with Lord Gardox, you're next. And just who is this so-called Lord Gardox that you continue to yap about, monkey? And as I never heard of any destroyer who went by Lord... What the... Oh no, the Namekian! What's he doing? Frieza went on to question, as Piccolo then went on to respond, You should really learn when to call it quits and stay in your damn grave where you belong, Frieza! Oh, hurry, Piccolo! Time is ticking and we can't hold him off any longer! And so go and fire it now! With Piccolo then shouting, Oh, now let's hope this works! Special Beam Cannon! So that's what you fools were planning, Black Frieza went on to shout upon Orange Piccolo being shown firing the Special Beam Cannon. You were planning to attack my blind spots! Oh, curse you disgusting animals! Alright, now that ought to do it, Beast Gohan went on to back away by then responding. But I have to hurry and charge up for something fast before he responds. I should have known, but your little tricks from the past will not work on me like they once did before. To which upon the moment of contact with Black Frieza now shown having to smash Piccolo's special beam cannon right back down at him was when Frieza then went on to continue. For you little worms are going to have to try and crawl a lot faster towards me if you wish to catch me off guard like that again. As I can promise you both now that with this new power of mine at my fingertips,
Eclipse. If this continues to go the way it is, then you are both doomed. And so nice try, but you'd be dreaming if you'd think I let the both of you sucker me into an attack like that. Oh yes, he took the bait. Orange picked Loman onto Shao by dashing towards the sky. Now hurry Gohan while he isn't looking in your direction. On me and fast. We've got to go and take him down right now. To which as Gohan was then shown punching Frieza in the face was when Gohan then went on to shout. And that's where you're wrong because for all of your power and for all of the training you've done to get to where you are, you've always underestimated the strength that comes from the allies who we fight alongside with, even if it means having to perish together, Frieza. And so you may have the advantage now, but understand that you are still alone, Gohan continues. You always have and you always will be, even in death, scum. But then, it was only from out of nowhere now with Orange Piccolo being shown wrapping his arms around Black Frieza was when Orange Piccolo then went on to continue. No, oh, gotcha. You didn't think that we'd go and let you off the hook that easily now, did ya? Well, not on my watch. Not today, Frieza. It's over. This is it, Piccolo continues. We've got to give it all that we have while I have him in our sights, with Black Frieza then having to shout, What? Why? You? And just where in the hell did you manage to come from? Let go of me right now, Namekian! Moves like hell I'd let go, as I would rather die and you know it, Frieza. Go on, hurry while I can still hold him! In which with Beast Gohan now shown having to unleash a barrage of punches while Frieza was held in place was when Orange Piccolo then went on to continue. And I hope that you're watching, Lord Gardox, because even if you decide to try and twist our own reality into forcing us to fight our enemies from the past, that still won't be what keeps us down whether this Frieza is a part of our original timeline or not. And to think that all of this was because of some stupid grudge that one god of destruction can't seem to let go for the other, go on went on to then chime in. And so you can try and pretend that you have a chance, but if I have to punch my way through that god of destruction's meat shield to go save my daughter, then continue to hold that scumbag right where he is, Piccolo. For I'm putting an end to Gardox's game right now, even if I have to punch through your skull to do it, Frieza. And so now don't let him go, Piccolo, as Frieza then shockingly went on to respond. Well, if it means having you tire out more and more with each and every single one of your strikes, monkey, then by all means, go and punch away. Knock yourself out. As the alternate Gamma 1 went on to chime in, no, no, but how could someone be that strong to the point where they're starting to laugh their opponent's attacks off like this? This is not good. Piccolo, go on! That monster is baiting you into attacking him. It's not working! You're both exhausted and he's forcing you into exerting all of your power! Hurry and find another plan of attack now before he is able to attack you! This was what he wanted! But then, it was only just when Black Frieza was then shown powering up and having to blow both Orange Piccolo and Beast Gohan away was when Beast Gohan then went on to shout, Mulls, what the hell? But where in the world is Frieza getting all of this energy from? You! Frieza went on to then quickly elbow Orange Piccolo in the chest. I'll start with you since you are really beginning to get under my skin, just like you once were starting to do on planet Namek, you rotten no good Namekian. And while as impressive as it was to see you turn orange, Black Frieza continues, you were never a threat to me to begin with, and you never will be, Namekian. Now go and wait your turn while I handle my business with the Saiyan. And now back to you, Beast Monkey Frieza went on to then grab onto Gohan's punch. Your lack of direction has always been your greatest weakness, Gohan. Ten years I've trained within the time chamber to achieve what you see standing before you. Ten. And unlike you, I went and seized my potential by understanding my place in the cosmos, Beast Monkey. And now as you begin to tire down, it's clear that you lack your father's enduring spirit for war, Saiyan. For he would never go and let himself fall like how far you've fallen throughout your life, boy. You 
You've wasted your own potential along with losing your mind, tribal monkey. As for whoever this god of destruction whom you speak of that goes by the name of Gardox is, should ultimately be the last of your worries, boy, as look how worthless you've become. For if I would have known that I'd grow to become this powerful, Frieza continues, then I'd simply go and target the gods of destruction and not waste my time on the likes of you and your kind, Saiyan. But it's quite tragic, Frieza was then shown going on the attack by responding, for you had the capability to surpass all of us, and in trying to do so, this is what you have to offer, an exhausted form that's already run down before our battle has even had the chance to start. You are nothing like Goku was. Whereas I, on the other hand, dedicated a decade in training to overcome you all. As once I'm done with you, Gohan, that no good sorry excuse of a god of destruction, Beerus, is next. And once he's out of my way, there will only ever be but one who will remain. And that one will be me, Saiyan. So tell me then, what is a primitive beast compared to the sheer might of a god-conquering emperor, Gohan? Nothing is what you are, boy. For let this be a reminder of how our battles have always ended. But only this time, your father won't be around to save you this time. And so now let's go for one last ride back down onto the earth beneath you so that you may be reminded of our history and why you will never best me, Black Frieza then went on to continue. As I always knew that you had the potential to be the strongest among your tribe of monkeys, as I will admit that you certainly held the edge in most cases, but you always lacked the destructive resolve of what it meant to be the best. And that is why you you amounted to nothing, Saiyan. In which moments later, with Black Frieza then shown having to slam Beast Gohan's body down onto the ground while still holding onto his neck, was when Black Frieza then went on to continue. And what's even more ironic is how I went and devoted myself in spending 10 years of my life in going as far as to make sure that you and your kind never get in the way of my plans ever again. I can't let you stop me from getting to my daughter Frieza I won't let you rip her away from me I'm going to crush you Frieza let Go! No, 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 hang on, Gohan. We can't lose now. Piccolo went on to barely stand up by responding. Pan needs you, please. Oh, wait a second. What was that surge just now? Did that sudden jolt just come from Frieza? No, no, it couldn't have been. It wasn't. And if it wasn't, so then that means surely it must be. Is there more to his true power than what he's using, Piccolo questions? It must be. And we have to hurry, for we only have just about 70 seconds left. As Black Frieza then went on to point towards Gohan's skull by then responding, you were always one of the very few among your tribe of apes to surprise me, Gohan. But no matter what form you take, in my eyes, you are still and forever and always will remain a Saiyan. Oh, weak Saiyan, and I have made it my life's mission to go to the ends of the earth and exterminate your kind if it's the last thing I do and I will. And while this beast form of yours is quite impressive, Frieza continues, it is nothing that I cannot handle, Saiyan. And while I'm lucky that you are in a very weakened and tired condition, I'd be a fool to allow for you to evolve beyond this very point of power, and especially while I have you right where I want you, Gohan. As you were formidable enough to provide me with some amusement, but make no mistake about it, I will obliterate you just as easily as I did your father, Vegeta, and Broly. As I want you to take a very good look at the last 
best thing that you will ever see, Saiyan. Now watch as I send you into the afterlife where your father and the rest of your dirty family wait for you. As with Goku and Vegeta shown being hesitant on agreeing upon having to leave with the angels when Vegeta then went on to respond, so this destroyer of yours, Lord Ferex, was it? What business does this god of destruction have in wanting to speak with the three of us face to face within his universe for Vegeta questions? Because if that destroyer has anything that he wants to say, then he can go and come back onto this planet and say what he has to say here, with Angel Rizo responding, now while I don't intend to sound gauche, nor do I wish to sound vague, but, well, Lord Ferrix would much rather want to address you all in a far more comfortable and motivating setting, if you will. Well, what do you guys think? Goku then went on to look on over by then questioning, because it sounds like whatever this god of destruction is looking to talk to us about is likely something that is very important, especially if he wants for all three of us to go over there. Well, I don't buy it, Vegeta responds, especially not after what happened with Lord Cobra, so we could be walking into a trap if we go. It's too risky, with Goku chiming in, yeah, you might be right, so, well, how about we all agree to go over to his universe only if he promises to come back here into ours in case something were to go wrong, so that way, in case there are any issues between us, we can go and settle them all here, with Chompa then having to chime in. Now you just hold on there for just a moment, Angel. How come Lord Ferrix only wants to talk to Beerus's annoying little mortals for? What about my universe, Rizal? Universe 6 is also home to some very powerful Saiyans, including Universe 6's legendary assassin. So what's the big idea here? Does Lord Ferrix think that my universe isn't any good or worthy or something? Then so cough it up and tell us since you're already here, because my universe is far superior in mortal numbers than Beerus is here in the 7th. And so what is it, huh? With Angel Rizo responding, well, I must say that while I understand your concerns in having Lord Ferrix consider this universe's mortals over yours, if anyone should remember on how unforgiving Lord Ferrix can truly be, then that person should be you, Lord Champa. For you do, of course, happen to remember on what Lord Ferrix is like when challenged, don't you? And so I would advise for you to stand down and away from Lord Ferrix's business with Lord Beerus and his universe, for you wouldn't want to go and have him call for you next. But then, it was only from out of nowhere now during his conversation with Champa, where Vegeta had now gone as far as to chime right into the middle of the conversation by then responding, Hey you, on second thought, we'll all agree and we will go, all three of us. That's what this god of destruction requested, right? So then fine, we'll go and see what he wants as long as we get to dictate the pace along with getting some answers out of him as well, got it? So if you agree, then we'll agree as well, with Rizal having to then respond, wait, so you mortals all agree to come and leave with me now then? Interesting, and while I cannot promise you that you will be able to dictate anything within Lord Ferrix's universe, you have my word that I will do what I can to have any and all of your questions and concerns that you may have for Lord Ferrix to be answered. Wait, seriously, Goku questions? So we're all just going to agree and just go? But what about what we just talked about and how all of this could be some kind of a trap for us? As Broly went on to step forward by then responding, I agree with Vegeta, so we should all go and see what this god of destruction wants from the three of us while also getting what we want out of him. So I'm in. Wait, you too, Broly? Oh, well, so much for the plan then, I guess. Well, what are you just standing around for, Kakarot? Hurry it up and let's get a move on before we decide to go and leave without you, Vegeta then went on to respond. You're wasting valuable time here, so get moving! With Rizal then having to question, well, he's not wrong, Saiyan, but if I didn't know any better, I reckon that you're the Saiyan that I heard that possesses the power of Ultra Instinct that had beaten Lord Reno, am I right? Yes, as I'm sure that Lord Ferrix would love to go and have a word with you, with Goku responding, ah, well, what the heck then, right, guys? Well, all right, I'm in, and yeah, I actually am, Goku responds. So you guys over in the 16th universe heard about our dealings with Lord Reno here in the 7th too, huh? With Angel Rizal responding, uh, yes, something like that, but splendid. And now that everyone has agreed to all tag along, I would suggest for you all to hold on tight before we go, for this may in fact be a little bit of a bumpy ride while on our way there. Well, hold 
Oh, now before you all go, we went on to chime in. There are a few things that I would like to make very clear to the three of you that I do want you all to please bear in mind, for this isn't anything that any of you should go and overlook either, we continue. So before you all venture off into Universe 16, I would go and advise extreme cautions in your dealings with Lord Ferrix, because even though he may not be as hot-headed as some of the other gods of destruction and can be reasonable, he is also very unpredictable, so your one and only sole motive should be to aim for a peaceful dialogue and nothing more, as provoking him would not be very wise for either of you to go and do, for Lord Ferrix is a formidable strategist with a very long streak of cruelty under his title as a destroyer, so you should only be there to engage in a productive dialogue and not challenge his authority, as Goku then went on to respond, ah, it'll be fine, Whis, and besides, I don't think that Lord Ferrix would be looking for a fight without directly challenging one of us to one, right? And so you don't have anything to worry about, and besides, we have Broly here with us in case something were to go wrong, and so you can go and count on us to be the reasonable ones here, isn't that right, Vegeta? So no, you're so annoying, you know that? And just what the hell are you even yapping about, Kakarot? He's being serious here, and therefore you should be serious about this too. This isn't a game, and so we will need to be on guard the entire time that we're there. So stop treating this like it's nothing and get it together, you idiots. Now hurry it up and let's go. To which, as all three Saiyans, including Angel Wiser, were then shown leaving, was when Chomp and then went on to chime in. Ha! Those Universe 7 Saiyans are walking right into their destruction, especially that annoying Goku, for that Saiyan's the biggest imbecile of them all, and I can't wait to hear all about how they went and screwed everything up once they arrive in Universe 16. It's like watching moths fly right into the fire, but I am rather curious on what Lord Ferrix wants to go and talk to these Saiyans about, because now I'm rather very much intrigued, with Whis having to then chime in, well I'm sure that whatever this may happen to involve will likely have something to do with some of the recent events that were shown taking place around here, if anything. Yeah, well, these are Beerus's cronies that we're talking about after all. And so nothing that comes out of this universe surprises me anymore, Chompa went on to chime in. But at least I was able to go and find some closure in learning of what happened here today. And so it's about time that Beerus got taken down a peg because it's been a long time coming and guess what else? It looks like his strongest mortals now are just about to go and get it too, and I can't wait to hear all about it when it happens. So no offense or anything, Whis, but, well, this universe is a complete circus, you know that? But I'm glad that Beerus got what he had coming, because now I'm going to go and tell everyone all about it. Isn't that right, Vados? Well, I really wouldn't talk so boldly if I were you, Lord Chompa, Vados responds, because did you happen to already forget that it was Universe 7 who went and brought us all back from Erasure during the Tournament of Power, so, well, don't you think that you ought to be a bit more grateful towards Universe 7, with Champa having to then respond, ah, grateful, schmateful, that was then, and this is now. So just you wait until the others get a load of what happened here today, so it's been nice chatting with you, Whis. And so do go and tell Beerus that I send my regards, along with my laughter at him, for failing. <laughs> See you later, Universe 7! To which moments later, as both Vados and Chompa were then shown having to make their exit and having to leave Beerus' planet, was when Whis then went on to say to himself, Well, this was quite the eventful day, and dare I even say one of the most eventful days in recent memory, and especially with all that's been shown having to happen here today, and so, well, let's just all hope that things don't continue to go and get any worse around here, and especially for Goku, Broly, and Vegeta, since I don't believe that Lord Ferrix simply wants to go and and talk to them, but I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens when they return, or, well, if they return for that matter, for those three have certainly looked as though they have garnered a whole lot of unwarranted attention lately. All right, now listen up and listen very closely, Whis, because enough is enough, and the opportunity couldn't be greater than what it is now, an unsuspecting Beerus went on to appear from behind, and with those Saiyans gone alongside those other gods of destruction, Beerus continues, I am now finally free of all external 
distractions around here and doing what it is that I need to do. For it's time for me to go and redefine my limits and go far beyond what I was ever known to previously be capable of. And so now let us proceed and start with the training immediately, Weiss, with the surprised Weiss being shown responding. Well, this is certainly a very unexpected and yet, dare I say, pleasantly shocking surprise, Lord Beerus. But am I mistaken or is that my signature weighted training outfit that I made and had you wear a very long time ago when I first started training you with Beerus responding yes it is as this is more than just a desire for me to go and improve for this is now a necessity Weiss for my recent epiphany has now shown me the path to true strength and I intend to fully go through with it and because of this I've realized something very crucial especially after experiencing all that I did here today and that is that my potential is far greater than what I was ever shown having to achieve before, with Whis responding, Well, goodness, and here I thought you went off to go and grab something to eat after your battle with Lord Reno, and to go far beyond anything you were ever shown having to achieve before. Interesting, and what exactly is it that you had in mind for us to go and do, Lord Beerus? With Beerus responding, If I intend to become the strongest god of destruction among all of them, then you must be willing to do anything and everything you can to train me, no matter the price that I'd have to pay. And so we'll start and go about this in stages, beginning with the training suit that you see here, Beerus continues. And no matter how brutal and no matter how dangerous, don't stop until I have evolved. Got it? As my aim is not only to evolve myself as a destroyer, but to also be capable of mastering Ultra Instinct, which is a skill that has been my Achilles heel for a very long time now, with Whis responding, Well, my oh my, how truly wonderful it is to hear you express such a desire for change, Lord Beerus. As your decision to transform your approach as both a destroyer and to resume your quest in wanting to master Ultra Instinct like how Goku has, is truly, dare I say, commendable, Lord Beerus. And so how exactly do you wish for us to go and do this, Whis questions? Shall we go and start by focusing on your foundational skills first, Lord Beerus? Or do you wish for us to go and jump straight into the advanced techniques? And with how you wish for us to go back to the way I used to train you in stages, how do you envision our approach? to each one while we train, with Beerus responding, Now you go and leave that Goku out of this, Whis, as I'll go and make sure good and damn well that he isn't the only one in this universe to wield it. And so we will start by timing the first stage of my training, beginning with the weighted training suit here. And then from there, we will go and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat once the final grain of sand has dropped within that hourglass, Whis. As from there, we will continue to engage until you have deemed for us to move on to the meditation meditation portion after, as once this is done, we will resume once again, only this time I intend to battle you within the spirit realm, Whis. As from there on, there will be one more lesson that I wish to undergo, but we'll go and save that for the very end and once I'm ready, and so now let's hurry and do this because I'm ready, Whis. Which all the while in the meantime, when then venturing back on over into Universe 15, in seeing God of Destruction Gardox being shown playing cards with Pan was when Angel Vodka went on to chime in, you know, I find it quite ironic that you'd go and want to use the mortal's very own history against them, especially when considering on how strong this, well, this so-called Black Frieza appears to be when compared to that Saiyan, don't you think? So wouldn't you want to go and extract as much as you can by also including that Frieza in this as well, my lord, with Gardox responding, And why should I? This Frieza doesn't appear to be anyone that Beerus would consider an ally to him, so why bother, Gardox questions, for I I don't care enough to target Beerus's enemies, as I only care enough to target those who'd he'd want to deem and consider an ally far more than anything else, Vodkal. And now watch as, but then, it was only from out of nowhere before Gardox was shown having to finish his sentence, where Pan was shown having to stand back up by addressing Gardox and responding, Mr. Green, I don't want to play this game anymore. You told me that my papa and Uncle Piccolo were going to have lots of fun here, but they didn't look like they were having any kind of fun here with you at all, and so I want to see my papa and Uncle Piccolo again right this moment, right now, and go home. I don't want to play anymore, with the surprised Gardox responding, you, you what? You're not having any fun and want to go back home? But you can't just go back home. Why would you want to go back home now? With Pan responding, no, I'm not. I'm not having any fun, especially since my papa and Uncle Piccolo seem like they're in trouble. And so I want to go and leave right now, Mr. Mr. Green, now please 
just bring them both back, with Gardox responding, Oh, well, you see, little girl, it's not that nice of you to go and raise your voice at me like that, you know. Especially if we're friends, because I don't really like when mortals go and tell me what to do. And so now be a good little mortal child and sit back down, as it's better if you go and listen to me too, child, for you don't want to go and ruin this awesome little game that I went and put together for us now, do you? Because that wouldn't be very nice of you to go and do now, right, friend? So now go and sit yourself right back down, with Pan having to then shout, No, I don't care about this game anymore, Mr. Green! I want to see my papa and Uncle Piccolo again right now and go back home! Now go and bring my papa back now! In which during this moment back with Black Frieza as Gohan was now beginning to hear the echoes of his daughter having to cry out for him was when Gohan then went on to utter Oh Pan, I can hear you Pan. M my daughter's in trouble and she needs my help. Which fortunately enough from out of nowhere with Orange Piccolo being shown having to appear and grabbing onto Black Frieza's shoulders was when Orange Piccolo then went on to shout Oh hurry Gohan, we have less than 60 seconds to go to make a difference here and so we've got to act right now. So now hurry and power through and use everything that you have because this may in fact be the one and only chance that we have to do this. How's you again, Namekian? How dare you understand that there is nothing that either one of you can do that will change the outcome of what's about to happen. Oh, hurry, it's now or never, Gohan. We have to do this. Which within that very moment now from out of nowhere with Beast Gohan shown having to emanate and unleash a massive power in which even went as far as to catch Black Frieza off guard was when Frieza then went on to respond. What, what just happened? What's going on? What are you doing, Saiyan? And just where are you getting all of this power from, you monkey? Now just what the hell do you think you're doing? Let go! In which at the same time when then venturing back on over into Universe 15 in seeing God of Destruction Gardox being shown addressing Pan without having to realize as to what was happening was when Gardox then went on to respond. Yeah, well, too bad. Now go and do as I say and sit back and what the? What just happened? I can't see a thing. And just why in the world is the first card glowing like this? I missed it. What happened, Vodkal? Did the mortals lose? With Angel Vodkal responding, well, now that's odd, but if I had to go and take a guess, my lord, I'd say that perhaps maybe there may have been a trigger event that had likely caused the mortals to go and turn the tables against Frieza. And if I'm not mistaken, then I'd even go as far as to say that it looks like something is about to go and emerge through the other side as well, with Gardox then being shown throwing his card out into the distance with Pan having to respond. Could that really be you, Papa and Uncle Piccolo? Can it really be you? With Gardox shouting, Oh, and the card is burning up too! Get away! In which seconds later, with both Orange Piccolo and Beast Gohan then shown having to emerge on the other side of the card and assuming that they were still fighting against Black Frieza was when Orange Piccolo then went on to shout, He's blinded, Gohan! He can't see! Then we have to hurry because we're almost out of time, Gohan then went on to shout. This is our chance! And so we have to go and attack him together, Piccolo! So let's go together before he... But then, it was only just within that very moment as Gohan and Piccolo realized where they were, where Piccolo then went on to respond, Wait, Gohan, stop! Look, Frieza's gone and we're back! As it looks as though it actually worked, we were able to shatter through! Well, would you look at that, Angel Vatko went on to chime in. The mortals were actually able to find a way to escape and break free with only seven seconds remaining as a joyful pan then went on to shout yay there you both are over here papa up here uncle piccolo oh you've got to be kidding me but that can't be right gardox then went on to add for those two were in no position to be able to find a way back here like that so something isn't right vodkel explain right now what happened well judging from the looks of it based on what i can tell vodko went on to then respond it appears that the mortal sudden and unexpected return into our universe was the result of a remarkable power surge that tore through the dimensional fabric, Vatko continued.
continues, as it also looks as though it was Gohan who in a moment of immense intensity had seemed to have channeled enough energy to shatter through the barrier dimension that confined them. Which strangely enough for that to happen, Gohan would have needed to exert a far greater level of power than the current beast form that he is also shown currently wielding as well, with Gardox responding, No, but that can't be right, Vogtgel. However, perhaps I've been too laxed with these mortals because they were actually able to beat the first stage. Hey, look, up there, Gohan, she doesn't appear as though she was harmed in any kind of way, which at least confirms that Lord Gardox's angel was actually telling the truth and held his word, with Gohan responding, Well, good, because that's one less problem for us to worry about. Pan! Listen to me! Hurry and get away from that god of destruction and come down here with us right now! You're not safe around him! In which seconds later, within that moment, as Pan had attempted in having to reunite with Gohan and Piccolo only for Gardox to be shown stopping her was when Gardox then went on to respond, Oh no, I don't think so, little one. And just where do you think you're going? Because I never said that you can go and just leave. How disappointing. And here I thought that you were supposed to be my friend. And friends are supposed to listen to each other, aren't they? And so you're not going anywhere, especially since the game is not yet over. Now, unless you know what's good for you, Gardox went on to put Pan back down. And unless you wish to anger me any more than you already have, then you will sit right there. Papa, Uncle Piccolo, please help me. Mr. Green made it so that I can't even move and I'm scared. Pan, stop this beast. Go on and Piccolo went on to then shout. You let her go right now or I'm going to tear your head off your shoulders, destroyer, now. And you shut your mouth down there if you know what's good for her, mortal Gardox went on to then respond. For you will go and do no such thing as I will admit that I honestly wasn't expecting for the two of you to go and pass the first stage of my three stages of hell game, but well, now that I can see what I'm up against here, what do you say we go and spice things up a bit by not putting a timer on the next stage that you will both go and undergo? For I promise that it'll be all worthwhile, you pesky little worms. And with how the two of you were shown barely scraping through the first stage, don't delude yourselves just yet, Gardox continues, because the second stage of my three stages of hell game will surely shock you both far beyond your wildest expectations. And so I doubt that either one of you will survive, but let's see if you're clever enough to prove me wrong so the burden is now yours. But I'll go and leave you both with this, so listen very closely, Gardox went on to continue. The solution to this stage is buried within your memory and experiences. So, if you have any hopes to survive, then you better dig back into your past if you can, as you will find the key to your survival there. And so I'm very eager to see if you can outsmart this next challenge, as regardless of your exhaustion, you'll need to fight for every bit of your freedom. And so aren't you both just so excited, as you're almost at the end of our game, so don't break down on me now, because we still have so much more for the two of you to go and experience. As with the eerily sinister destroyer now ensuring that neither Piccolo or Gohan were about to survive the upcoming stage to his game was when Gardox then went on to respond, and so now being that I wasn't expecting for either one of you to make it out of the first stage of Hell in One Piece, I'm quite surprised to see that you're still both willing and able to go through with this. But nevertheless, as I now want to welcome you both to the second stage of my game, Gardox continues. Now it's like I went on to mention, so you both better be listening very closely. Because if you wish to advance your way onto the final stage of my game and win, then you must utterly destroy your next opponent by any means necessary. Do this, and you will be one step closer towards your freedom. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. Since Gohan was the one who was mainly responsible in shattering through the dimensional fabric of the parallel world that you both had found yourselves in, in order for the second stage to be completed, Gohan will need to be the one who destroys your upcoming opponents. And 
failure to do so will result in disqualification, with Orange Piccolo responding, Well, since it's obvious to us both that it's Gohan who you're mainly after here, why don't you just leave the child out of this and send her back home since you already have what you've been curious about seeing right here in front of you, Destroyer? Why do you have to stoop this low just to want to get back at Lord Beerus for some lousy comments that he made? And if it's my power that you're interested in, Gohan responds, then leave my daughter out of this because I'm right here if you want to see it for yourself, Destroyer. Now come and take your aggression out on me if you must, but leave my daughter and everyone else out of your sick and twisted games, Gardox. As it's not so hard for you to understand that if you're that desperate to want to make Lord Beerus' universe suffer, then why don't you go and put aside the others and come take it out on me instead? Actually, on second thought, my Lord Angel Vodka went on to lean on down by whispering, I strongly think that you ought to reconsider this approach and have them face the perfected version of this monster, for it seems as though the version that they have defeated was an incomplete model, and so therefore, why not just go and have them face off against its intended perfected design, since they would already know on how to counter the previous model, for it would be far more beneficial, my lord, with Beast Gohan being shown pounding on his chest by then shouting, you wanted to know what Lord Beerus' universe was like and if it housed mortals that could potentially rival gods of destruction, right? Well, then you're looking at one of them, and so if you truly want to weed out and cut down on Lord Beerus' strongest, then I'll happily volunteer so as long as you leave everyone else out of this destroyer. And so now, what do you say? You and me, right here, right now. No games, no distractions, just me and you, Lord Gardox, with Gardox responding, well, very tempting, but you aren't going to pride your way into suckering me into a fight just yet, mortal. Or did you already forget about where you are and whose house you are currently in, Saiyan? And so nice try, but I've already made up my mind, and so the game will continue until it has been completed. But don't you worry, because if, and only if you have what it takes to complete my entire game and win, will you only then be rest assured that you and I are going to have lots and lots of fun together, especially once you start to see the true nature of my hidden power, mortal. But until then, the girl will remain here with me until further notice. You got that? So if you truly hope to push through, Gardox continues, then you better start to remember as to what you're fighting for because anything less and you will never see your precious daughter ever again, Saiyan. And so do make sure that you give it your best and so now remember what it was that I said for it'll be the only clues that I will give you and if Beerus truly has been housing warriors that can truly match that of a god, then this next stage shouldn't be that big of a problem for you to go and deal with and so I'll be watching or well should I rather say that we'll be watching your battle together isn't that right best friend and so worry not child because if your father is truly as powerful as he claims to be then both he and the Namekian should be just fine and so in the meantime you and I are going to resume our previous activities while your daddy goes and handles business elsewhere, kiddo. Trust me, it'll be fun. I can see now that my papa and uncle Piccolo were right about you, Mr. Green, and you won't be able to keep them down either, Pan went on to respond, with Gardox chiming back in, hey now, you were supposed to be on my side during all of this, and so that wasn't very nice of you to go and say to me, you know, best friend, but if you're willing to make a wager on this upcoming contest, then I'd be more than willing to match you on it so that way I can see the look on your innocent little face when you go and watch your father and Namekian uncle lose before your very eyes. And so with that said, good luck mortals, as Gardok's second card was now beginning to glow, because I can guarantee you both that you're certainly going to need it, so you shouldn't have to worry if you're as strong as you claim to be, because this ought to be a piece of cake for you, especially if you're supposed to be some of Beerus' strongest warriors. And so now have fun, as we'll be be sure to watch you both from the other side here, and so it's just like Beerus once said, better you than 
me, right, mortals? Well, best of luck, and remember what it is that I said, or you won't be making it back alive if you don't. So, ta-ta, Universe 7. Oh, no, damn it! What's he doing? Gohan then went on to question. Oh, I can't see a thing, Piccolo. Oh, neither can I, but brace yourself, Gohan, because he's likely going to do what he did before. But then, it was only just within that moment as Gohan and Piccolo now found themselves in another yet very familiar location was when Gohan then went on to respond. Oh, what the? Uh, hey, look. We're back to where we just were on Earth, so it looks as though he sent us back to the exact location where we just battled against Frieza, but where is he? I don't seem to sense Frieza's energy anywhere, nor am I able to see Gamma 1 around here either, so what do you think, Piccolo? You think he brought us back here so that we can continue our battle with Frieza, or what? With Piccolo responding, no, I don't. There's something off about this world, and so just like the one that we were both just in with Frieza, I'm pretty sure that this is more than likely a different dimension than our own, along with the one that we found ourselves battling against this Black Frieza, but the question is why? With Gohan responding, hey, wait a second, look, something's happening all around us, and if I didn't know any better, is it me, or are the objects that are floating all around us the same parts that Cell Max was made of before he self-destructed? Oh, what's going on here? With Piccolo responding, yes, you're right, I believe it is, and so I have no doubt that this God of Destruction is up to something, and so we'll need to be on guard at all times, no matter what. Oh, but the better question is, what is that God planning? Wait, look up there, Beast Gohan quickly went on to then interject. Is that Destroyer piling Cell Max's remains together so that he can go and rebuild him, or what? But of course, Piccolo responds, this must be what he meant when he said that we'd be battling against a recent enemy of our past. And before that Destroyer came along, Cell Max was the last enemy that we battled against, and so it must be him. Oh, just great, you've got to be kidding me, Gohan went on to shout upon having to see Cell Max reform yet again. But we just finished fighting that monster, and so now we have to go and fight him again? Oh, well, you know what to do, Piccolo. Gohan, wait, Orange Piccolo went on to quickly interject. There seems to be something more that's happening here, because look closely. Even though that God of Destruction went and reassembled him, something seems to be very off about this version of Cell Max, because if anything, he would have went and already had attacked us by now, but he hasn't, so there's something more that's happening here that we aren't seeing, to which as Gardox was beginning to oversee this entire situation from Universe 15 was when Gardox went on to then chime in. You know, I honestly find it quite fascinating that this mindless Cell Max had given you all such a tough time while in his incomplete state, and so, if you were barely managing to hold your own against this version of Cell Max, then just imagine what a fully completed and perfected variation of this monster would be like, and especially if the incomplete version had already given you enough trouble as it is. And so I'm quite intrigued to see on how you would fare up against him once the playing field is now evened, mortals. And since Vodkill here tells me that this isn't your first encounter with this cell life form, as I hear that you all had went and found yourselves engaging against some kind of a perfect cell before, then why don't we just go and combine the better sums of both life forms and see what we end up getting, eh? To which as soon as a black ball of energy was now beginning to envelop Cell Max as Cell Max was beginning to change was when Piccolo went on to then chime back in. Something's not right and it's very clear by now that Lord Gardox is doing something to alter Cell Max's presence here against us. And so we've got to exercise extreme caution here because this may not be the same Cell Max which we battled and destroyed back in our realm, Gohan. And look, it's just like I said because Cell's power appears to be growing more and more with each passing second. Well, the hell with that, Gohan went on to then cry out. I'm done having to deal with this freak, and I'm not about to go and allow for this monster to try and get the leg up on us like how he tried before. And if this is who I'll need to smash through in order to save Pan from the clutches of that god of destruction, then I'll do Gohan. Wait, this is not what you think it is, and I don't think that this god of destruction had intended for us to fight Cell Max again like this, especially not like how it was when we battled against him before, with Gohan questioning, what do you mean? That's exactly what that destroyer had intended for us to face. And so why are you stopping me from going in there and doing what I have to do? With Piccolo responding, it's because if I let you blindly rush in and attack that thing, then you will likely die. Just look closely and watch. Cell Max is changing. And 
Now to add the finishing touches to my pet monster before he's set loose into the wild. Gardox went on to oversee his second card by responding. Now let's just find out on how tough you truly are when your back is pressed against the wall of pain, Saiyan. And so this ought to do the trick then. And bingo. Now good luck in trying to power your way out of this one. Gardox went on to snap his fingers. Oh, what, what's going on with him? Beast Gohan went on to question. Uh, I don't know. But brace yourself in case he goes on the attack. Wait. Oh, no. G Gohan, are you seeing what I'm seeing up there? A horrified Piccolo went on to then ask. But this shouldn't be possible. And so I was right. No. That God of Destruction did it. He really went and did what we thought would never happen. Oh, great. And so now what do we do? As moments later to the sudden shock and horror of both Piccolo and Gohan who were now having to oversee Perfect Cell Max having to hover above them was when Gohan went on to then chime back in. I don't understand. How is that God of Destruction able to warp our reality like this and even go as far as to bring about enemies of our past out like this? It's those cards that he was shown holding, Gohan continues. They are all more than likely alternate timelines and universes where nightmares like this are brought into existence. And so what do you think? You think we can go and take him or what? With Orange Piccolo responding, I'm not sure, but there's no telling on what we're in for, so listen closely. We are up against something extremely unprecedented here, and so every move that we make and every ounce of our strength that we use will need to be counted, Piccolo continues. As this is beyond any challenge that we've likely ever went and faced before. And so if what Lord Gardox had said was true, then this perfected Cell Max more than likely has the same weakness as the other. As perfect Cell Max now went on to reawaken by then responding, Well, well, how truly pitiful it is to see your faces once again. Oh, how the tables have now been turned, because now that my brain chip has been installed properly courtesy of Universe 15's God of Destruction, Gardox, I want you both to prepare to face an adversary like no other, Perfect Cell Max went on to continue. Especially you, Gohan. Because if you thought that I was dangerous before, then wait until we start to engage once again. And I will not be beaten like how I was beaten before. And so don't go and dilute yourself with past victories, for I am not the same entity that the two of you have went and battled against before. As I remember everything everything. And now, in my completed form, I am now the very embodiment of power and precision, as I will fulfill my destiny by ushering in a new era, just like I was supposed to do, and all in the name of the Red Ribbon Army and Lord Gardox. It's that monster again, Pan went on to oversee the second card that Gardox was holding by then responding. The one that my papa and uncle Piccolo, as well as the others, were fighting to stop, but why does he look like that now? Now, why are you doing this to us, Mr. Green? Why are you trying to hurt my papa and uncle Piccolo for like this? With Gardox responding, you ask why? Well, that's because I can. That's why, little girl. And if Lord Beerus thinks that his universe will house mortals that are greater than mine, let alone even go as far as to rival the power of a destroyer, well, that Beerus can go and guess again. And so now sit down. You have have no idea on how I've longed for this moment, Perfect Cell Max went on to stick his finger out by then responding, for this is now a moment where I stand before you all, not as just a mere project or an experiment, but as your superior. For your actions have only fueled my evolution, my ascension to perfection, and now you will face the consequences of your arrogance. Now whether one of you dies or both of you dies, neither of these outcomes will bother me, and so now watch. Oh no, come on! Hurry and hang on! Beast Gohan went on to grab Orange Piccolo by then dashing towards the sky. He's going to level the entire field below us! In which within that very moment, as a gigantic explosion was now shown having to overtake the entire landscape below was when Gardox was shown having to oversee this by then responding. Whoa! Now that was a good one, I gotta say. We'll talk about a close call, eh? Well, so I guess your papa really did go and save the day.
day because they likely would have been goners if he didn't act quick enough and grab the Namekian and escape like how he did. Oh, damn that monster! We barely made it out of there alive! Are you okay, Piccolo? With Piccolo responding, Whoa, nice save down there, but yeah, I'm fine. But listen, if this Cell Max is anything like the last one, then we have to, but then, it was only just from out of nowhere with Perfect Cell Max shown having to interrupt Piccolo by punching Piccolo in the face was when Gohan then went on to shout, What the heck, Piccolo? No! I think that's quite enough talking out of you, Piccolo, for you are of no use to me in this fight, nor are you worth sacrificing any of my time for. But before Beast Gohan had the chance to go off and try to grab Piccolo, was when Perfect Cell had then decided to grab onto the back of Beast Gohan's shirt and having to pull Gohan back by then responding, Oh no you don't, boy. And just where do you think you're going? You and I have a score to settle, which we will go and settle here and now, Gohan. Oh, what's wrong, Gohan? Has your magnificent power that you used to destroy me with leave you? With Gohan responding, Damn you! And for you to stand there in your so-called perfect new body only goes as far as to capture the same old arrogance that always led to your downfall, and I see right through it all, Cell. So you may think that you have achieved some new kind of ultimate power, but all I see are the same mistakes that you always repeated throughout our battles, with Perfect Cell Max responding, Oh, really now? Is that what you think is happening right now here between us, Gohan? Because if what you are saying is actually true, then why are you having such a hard time in hitting me, Gohan? What happened? Certainly you can't be that tired from fighting those Gambas along with my incomplete self that it's worn you down this much now, has it? Or maybe, perhaps you never had it within you to begin with, which is why you are all out of steam, Gohan. Doesn't it hurt to know that just like when you were a little boy, that without your friends alongside your father to help you stop me, you just can't simply go and do it on your own, to which as Cell was shown having to knee Gohan in the stomach before uppercutting him was when Cell then went on to continue, because I must admit that although this beast form, or whatever it is that you call it, was certainly something that caught me by surprise, I can only go as far as to assure you that there will be nothing that you can try and do that will catch me by surprise like that again. Mark my words, and since I was given a second chance by this unknown god of destruction who goes by the name of Gardox, whatever he is looking to gain out of you isn't anything that he should be worrying himself over, because without your friends and without your family to aid you in battle here against me, Gohan, you are nothing more than a helpless victim just waiting for death to come knocking at your front door so that it may come and finally take you away, and guess what? It's finally here, Cell continues, for you should have remained as far away from the Red Ribbon base as you could, but since you and I have a very deep and rich history, then let this prove to that god of destruction that you are just as worthless to me as you'd be to him, Gohan. And you know, come to think of it, Cell went on to continue by having to pull Gohan forward, I can't help but notice that your power is slowly starting to drop little by little. Well, it looks like this beast form of yours is much tougher than I assumed that it would be, but this too will not last very long because while you continue to grow weaker, I continue to remain the same. And so what do you think, Cell questions? How long do you plan on lasting out here against me, Gohan? With Gohan responding, y You have no idea on how far I'm willing to go, especially if it involves the safety of my daughter, Cell. And as for how long you think I'm going to last out here against you? Well, the answer is simple, because as long as I need to, if it means putting you down. In which, surprisingly enough, with Gohan Shon having to headbutt Cell away and having to create distance between them was when Gohan then went on to continue. So whether you're perfect again or not, nothing that you do is going to stop me from reaching my daughter, Cell. Oh, are you rotten Saiyan? And what was that sudden surge of energy that I just felt that was coming from you, Cell questions? Well, so it looks like you still have some more gas in that old tank of yours after all. Well, I hope that it will last because the punishment that you have coming your way is going to be needed for it. With Gohan responding, Yeah, we'll see about that, but just know that if I was able to destroy you twice before, then you can make no mistake about the fact that I will do it again 
no matter what it takes because one way or another if it means that I'll need to lay my life down to rescue my daughter then I'll do it and so now come on and let's do this as with Beerus now also shown having to wear the weighted outfit that was originally given to him by Whis upon Whis having to be shown attacking him was when Whis then went on to respond oh and there we are now very good Lord Beerus and while I'm very impressed to see how you were still able to remember our previous training patterns I can't help but notice that your concentration is a bit shaken during our battle as I wanted you to know that even with the added weight of this suit, your priority should be on fine-tuning your concentration and predicting my attacks rather than being fixated on the discomfort of your training suit, my lord. Oh, well that's easy for you to say because you're not the one who is being crushed under the weight of a 100,000 ton training suit here, Whis. And so now quit trying to get into my head and distract me. In which with Whis now going back on the attack with Beerus now barely shown having to avoid each and every single one of Whis's strikes was when Whis then went on to respond, well this was what you wanted, was it not Lord Beerus? And if this was how you wanted for us to train, then I cannot go and leave anything on the table, especially if my intention here is to have you evolve my lord. And even though you are starting to finally come around and make progress here, we still have a very long way to go if we hope to push you far enough in reaching your ultimate goals. And so I do advise that you concentrate more on coordinating your movements and anticipating my attacks so that way you can try and find the opening that you need in order for you to finally make your move, Whis continues. For I'm sure that you wouldn't want to have what happened with Lord Reno earlier to happen once again in the near future now, do you? What did you just say, Whis? Oh, now that does it! How dare you! In which casually enough with Whis being shown blocking off Beerus' punch with simply one finger was when Whis then went on to respond, Good, very good. Good, just like that, but was I wrong? Did my words happen to strike a nerve with you, Lord Beerus? For I can now begin to finally see the fire within your eyes, and especially now that you are starting to focus more on your goals and less about what I had you currently wear to train, but was I wrong with what I said? Of course you're wrong, Whis, and I don't care what I'll need to go through or how long it's going to take, for I will not have what happened to me before to ever be shown to happen to me like that again. And so so now quit your instigating and stop trying to anger me and fight harder. Now that's the fire that I was hoping I'd see come from you, my lord. But if you insist and want for me to fight back and push you even farther than how I was shown pushing you before, then I will from here on do my best to give you a much tougher battle. But I do want you to remember that whatever happens here will all serve as a direct result of how much you are willing to allow for any of it to happen, my lord. To which as Beast was then shown flicking Beerus across the head with his finger, it had only now become fairly evident that Beerus by no means was going to have an easy training session with Whis, as Whis then went on to continue, but just do make sure that whatever happens that you do your best to not relinquish your fighting spirit, Lord Beerus. And so while I understand that you may be in a bit of a predicament here, Whis went on to continue as Beerus went bouncing on the floor, should you fail to enhance your abilities and evolve yourself, will you only then find yourself never amounting to anything near what you once were, and will always in forever live within the shadow that you've casted down onto so many to see, Lord Beerus, as I know that you have what it takes to prove them all wrong and for you to right the wrongs of your history, but do you? In which even despite the fact that with Beerus being at a significant disadvantage, Beerus was by no means willing to give up now, as Beerus went on to then clutch on down to the ground by then responding, Oh, now that does it! I know what you're trying to do here and whether I find myself fighting for every last inch of making it down the road of where I need to be or not, the fear behind my name will once again ring across the ears of the gods like thunder once I am able to evolve my collective power. Well, that's the spirit, my lord, but in order for you to do that, Whis continues, you'll need to go and fight your way through the pain and prove to me that you still got it, which the question now is do you? No, oh, prove to you that I still got it, huh? Well, then how's about this for proving if I still have it, Whis? In which from out of nowhere with Beerus now shown having to unleash a gigantic energy blast with Whis being shown having to leap up out of the way was when Whis then went on to continue. Oh my, well that was a close call, but this was exactly what I wanted to see come from Lord Beerus. And especially since I'm starting to now sense that his mindset is beginning to improve more and more the longer this goes. And so now if he could go and keep this kind of momentum going, then I have no doubt that he will succeed. And as it also looks as though the first half of Lord Beerus 
Spirits' training is also about to reach its end in a matter of seconds, too. Well, an early congratulations to you, my lord, for it looks as though we are now about to complete the first stage of your training before entering into the second. And so just so you know, we will resume our battle without the weighted suit this time, and so get ready. Oh, get ready, he says, and just what exactly do you take me for down here, Weiss? Don't push your luck here, because you and I both know that if it were not for your ultra instinct, then you'd already be in the dust, and so now start the clock over again, because this means war! As it was only now within this second, as Beerus was shown having to dash out of his weighted suit and heading towards Weiss, was when Weiss then went on to respond, War, you say? Well, for your sake, I sure do hope that you aren't the first to surrender, because I sure do doubt that the other gods of destruction would. And so what do you have to say about that, Weiss questions? Surely me and you both know that you'd be among the last ones standing in such a scenario now, would you? Because if you are, then I want you to show me, with Beerus shouting, Whoa, I'll show you, Weiss! You and that big loud mouth of yours, for I haven't heard you act like this since the early days of when you were first assigned to me! But even then, just like before, as Beerus kept on attacking Weiss, with Weiss being shown avoiding each and every single one of Beerus' punches, it didn't look as though Beerus had any sort of remote chance in coming close and touching Weiss, as Weiss went on to then continue, Oh, well, you're getting close, Lord Beerus, but I hope that you know that a part of the reason as to why I'm talking down to you like this is because one of the cycles that you will have to learn to break is allowing for what someone else says about you to infect your mind, Weiss continues, as you intend to act more on your emotions from that point rather than your own instincts, as Beerus then went on to shout, Yeah, well, I don't buy it, Weiss, and so now hold still already and quit dodging everything that I throw at you! There, you see Weiss responds by chopping Beerus suddenly in the neck? You are only furthering my point with what I just said because instead of acting on your instincts to watch and see my attacks coming, you instead acted on your own emotions because of what I said. And well, I guess it was fun while it lasted and when you wake back up, Weiss continues, I hope that you were able to find it within yourself to go and try and rid yourself of this small yet noticeable weakness, for you do not want to allow for this to hinder on you, but we'll wait and see how things will go once you, but then, surprisingly enough, instead of seeing Beerus get knocked out by Whis's chop, Beerus was from that point then instead shown getting back into the fight, as Beerus then went on to shout, Oh no, I will find a way to fight through this and win, you hear me, Whis? We're not done! Well, I can't believe it, Whis responds, for this is the very first time that you were ever shown taking a chop from me like that and bouncing back into the fight for some more, but nevertheless, this is good, Weiss went on to continue by blocking off all of Beerus' punches, as this only means that you are now starting to get ever so closer towards reaching your goals. However, don't forget, Lord Beerus, that even though we have only just started our training here on this planet, for that doesn't necessarily mean that we will finish your training here on this planet either, Weiss continues, as I also want you to remember that this was your idea after all, but now that I can start to see as to how hungry you are to do this, then let's see if I can go and try to knock you out again, but then, it was only from out of nowhere to even Whis's surprise, as Whis went on to throw a punch with Beerus now shown ducking on under, was when Whis then went on to utter, oh, now wait a minute now, yes, yes, but of course Whis shouts, for it's just as it was during the Zen exhibition event when you first started to use your Ultra Instinct ability against the other gods of destruction, as even though I can already see the many flaws that comes with the variation that you've come to use, it's a close enough start in getting back into the groove of using it, Whis went on to then leap on back by responding, there, you see, now that's what I wanted to see come from the almighty destroyer of universe 7, for you're finally starting to get back into the hang of things again, Whis continues, so although we'll still need to work on your reflexes a bit more along with finding a good balance in between using your destroyer power and ultra instinct, nevertheless, thus far, you are doing great, with Beerus responding, Finally, some recognition, Whis. As avoiding your attacks is no easy feat to accomplish, but the difference should be more than clear now, Beerus continues, especially since you're starting to see that I'm slowly beginning to improve the longer this goes. And so I don't know how it is that you do it without ever having to get tired, but I'll get there there too. Just you wait, Whis. And so now do me a favor and hurry it up and increase your striking 
fighting power in battle, Whis. For if I am to test my limits, then I need for you to attack me with far heavier attacks than the ones that you have used, Beerus continues. As my desire for destruction now is becoming more and more insatiable, and this battle is only fueling it. And so I need more, Whis. For this fight and this pain that I endure only sharpens my resolve for revenge. And I intend to have it when the time comes. And so maybe mastering this Ultra Instinct may not be so hard for me to do after all, huh, Whis? And so don't you worry, I'll get there because the longer I get the hang of trying to use it, the better I'll become for once I find a way to master it. Just you wait. As all the while in the meantime, when then venturing back on over into Universe 16, in seeing as to how Angel Rizal had now brought Broly, Vegeta, and Goku onto Lord Ferrix's planet, was when Angel Rizal then went on to respond, Alright now, and there we all are, for it is with great honor that I welcome you mortals into the infamous 16th universe and onto Lord Ferrix's prestigious homeworld. And while exploration is permitted, Angel Rizal continues, please be aware that any risks that you take are yours alone to manage if a problem were to occur, with Goku then having to respond, Whoa, this place is huge, and just take a look at all of that sand in those really large pyramids, too. And boy, oh boy, is it hot out here or what? Wow, and so, uh, if Universe 16's God of Destruction was really looking to talk to us about something, then, well, where exactly is he, Goku questions? Because we don't seem to be able to sense him anywhere, and so is he close by, or do we have to go out there and start looking for him or something, with Angel Rizal responding, Well, although you may not be able to sense Lord Ferrix, you can rest assured that Lord Ferrix can most definitely sense you, and so you don't have to worry about finding him, because I'm pretty sure that he's already went and found all of you. Now, I do want to go as far as to warn you all and say that the temperatures here on Lord Ferrix's world can be extremely dreadful, even for the mightiest of warriors, and so do be cautious in your approach and what it is that the three of you decide to go and do, with Goku responding, Oh wait, he knows? Well, where is he then? With Vegeta responding, So the terrain here is ideal for him then, which is why I can see now on why he wanted for us to come here. Yeah, well that makes sense too then, I guess Goku responds, but it's really hard to get a good read on this place given how hot it is and how dense the sand within the air that surround us are, and so I gotta be honest here and say that a battlefield like this would certainly be a hard one to get fully accustomed to, but hey, look over there, Goku continues. Do you guys see the size of that thing? Wow, that god of destruction has a massive statue that's built after him too, which also probably means that he likely has worshippers here on this planet too, with Broly having to chime in. So if this god of destruction is that revered in this universe, then why does he want to go and speak with us from the seventh floor? I don't trust any of this, with Vegeta having to then chime in. Pay attention to where it is that you walk, because this isn't ordinary sand that we're stepping on here either, for there's something different about it, as it appears heavy, almost similar to that of quicksand, Vegeta continues. So keep your senses sharp, because one wrong move and we could find ourselves being swallowed whole by the terrain. Oh wait, something's happening, Vegeta went on to then quickly notice. Why is the sand moving all of a sudden like this? Unless, which as indeed Vegeta's suspicions were in fact true, because from behind, as soon as Universe 16's God of Destruction, Ferrix, was beginning to rise up from the sand, was when Ferrix then went on to respond, so you three are the privileged mortals whom Beerus allows to roam freely and coexist with. Well then, welcome, warriors of Universe 7, for your tales of strength along with what I was told intrigues me. And while your dealings with several gods of destruction have now become very well known, they do in fact happen to bring to mind a few perplexities which I happen to have several questions about, and so it's time that we have a little chat in getting down to the bottom of things, Saiyans. As mortal warriors such as yourselves are very few and far in between, especially for those of you who happen to harbor power that is on par or stronger than a god.
gods. Now, originally, I had assumed that there would only be two of you whom Beerus had favored, but now that I can see that there are three, I can also now begin to sense that all three of you appear to be different among each other in your own unique ways, Ferex continues. But even now, as the rumors of mortals with god rivaling and god surpassing power reaching my domain, I'm starting to now put into question as to why that is, and more importantly, on how you were able to do it, as I can assure you all that although I am not a fan of Lord Beerus, I don't hold a personal grudge against him like the others, for I just simply don't like him. Whoa, was he really buried beneath the sand this entire time just waiting for us before we got here, Goku then went on to question? Well, although we may not share the same expression towards Lord Beerus like you do, if it were not for him and the approval that he gave us to train on his planet, then the power that you're curious to know about wouldn't have been something that we would have been able to acquire on our own, and so what about it, Goku questions, with Ferex responding, Interesting. So I take it that Beerus had went and trained you himself, then Ferex questions, or did he allow for the three of you to coexist alongside him for other reasons, with Vegeta responding, Well, not quite, because we've each gone about by walking down our own separate paths, with Lord Beerus only training one of us, which in this case would happen to be me, with Ferex responding, Only one of you, huh? Yes, I can see why, but what about the other two? If you claim that Beerus had only trained one of you, then what offers have you made to Universe 7's God of Destruction that would have allowed for the other two Saiyans to remain? Um, offers? Well, I mean, none really, Goku responds, other than just giving him some of our planet's best tasting food to eat in exchange for him allowing for us to train on his planet, but it's like Vegeta said, as we don't really all train the same over there, as Vegeta mainly trains with Lord Beerus and had decided to walk down the path of obtaining the power of a destroyer, whereas I usually train with Whis in walking down the road of the angels in trying to better hone and master my ultra instinct, so it really all depends, and me and Vegeta usually go and battle against and train with each other most of the time, and with Broly now joining us not too long ago, we've been also training with him and helping him gain better control of his power as well, with Ferex having to then question how utterly disgraceful for a god of destruction to go and do, for Beerus's willingness to trade training in in exchange for food is a new low even for him, Ferex continues, but I shouldn't be so surprised given his notorious laziness, but tell me something. So with you who calls yourself Goku had been trained by an angel, and with you who goes by Vegeta had been trained by a destroyer, then what about him in the middle, Ferex went on to point out. The bigger Saiyan among your group, who is he trained by and does he harbor a similar power that the two of you happen to also share? Or he doesn't come across as though he shares the same virtuous training as either of you, and so what is so special about this one? With Goku responding, well, Broly's training is a bit different because even though he's really not under Lord Beerus's or Whis's training umbrella, Broly's power, especially in his berserker state, is absolutely massive and very hard to contain, and so it's almost kind of similar to what you would expect from a god of destruction, and so even though Broly here doesn't happen to have the same power as me and Vegeta do, we're trying to help Broly harness and control this power of his because on its own, it's too unstable for him to go and manage to hold out without some kind of control over it, but we have no doubt that once Broly here is able to control that level of power, then he'd more than likely be the strongest fighter among all of us, even far surpassing the power of Lord Beerus, but for now, we can only safely say that he's still learning. Interesting. How very enlightening of you both to share that information with me, Ferex responds upon having to pull both Goku and Vegeta towards him. And since you've made it clear to me that you two are the only ones who seem to harbor this destroyer rivaling power because of whom you've been training under, then let us have more of a personal conversation and talk face to face, mortals. And as for your accompanied ally who you commonly refer to as Broly, I will go and save him for last since I'm more interested in dealing with the two of you Saiyans first. Hey, what in the world, Goku?
Goku questions? How the heck did he just go and use the sand beneath us to pull us both forward like this? Since the two of you are among a very rare breed of warriors who claim to be capable of wielding such power, Ferex went on, then I want to see how experienced the two of you are by using it. And so here lies your fate, but the decision on what your fate turns out to be will be entirely up to you to determine, as these tombs will either serve as your eternal prisons, or they will serve as your fortunate gateways, with Goku responding, No way! Not a chance! So what exactly did you mean when you said you wanted to see how experienced we are with our power? What are you trying to pull on us here? With Vegeta also chiming in, Like hell we'll be going inside of those things, and so what's your deal here? And what exactly are these tombs for? Because we're not going inside of them, you hear me? My intent in presenting this before you both and challenging you is simple, Ferrix responds, for I wish to gauge the extent of your prowess that was honed under the tutelage of both a god and an angel, Ferrix continues, and if you can prove yourselves as formidable as the rumors of what I have heard suggest for you all to be and best me in battle, then I will set aside any grievances with your god of destruction and all of my disputes with Beerus will be forgotten. And to further add on to this, I will also grant you all one request that I will agree and approve upon, but if neither of you can prove your worth by showing me the true nature of your godly training and power, then you will both be mummified and buried beneath the sands of my world forever. As with Beerus now shown visibly frustrated despite the fact of refusing to give up against Whis was when Beerus went on to chime in, Oh, this is just infuriating. Every time I feel as though I'm getting closer and closer towards maintaining Ultra Instinct, the next thing you know, it just slips right through my fingertips before I am able to get better adjusted to it. And so what exactly am I missing here, Whis? What's the secret to holding on to it during these high-intensity battles? As I am a god of destruction for crying out loud here, and so why is it so difficult? Why can't I sustain this power for longer than a few seconds, Whis? It's almost as though this ultra instinct is starting to taunt me, merely within reach when I need it the most, but gone when I try and capture it, and so now tell me, Whis, what is it going to take? How can I fuse it seamlessly with my destructive power, Beerus questions? I know that you know, and so how do I do it without dropping out of using that power? Power. And just the mere fact that you're standing there with that ridiculous little smile on your face says it all. And so now tell me. Tell me now because I am not striving for power here just for the sake of having it, Whis. I'm out here to prove a point and to make a statement and so I need answers as to how I can do it. As integrating Ultra Instinct with my Destroyer abilities is very crucial here and so I can't let this hurdle stop me. And so I want you to tell me everything that I need to know in order to sustain sustain this strength, or we're going to have lots of problems, and so now spill it and tell me what it is that I need to do. Right now, Whis, or else. With Whis responding, Well, my lord, you're right. I do in fact know of how you can achieve this, but you should know better than anyone that I'm not just going to tell you without having to make you work for it, Whis continues, but I will go on and say this, so I hope that you remember, and that is that the very essence of Ultra Instinct solely lies within in your subconscious reaction by letting go of your emotions rather than trying to exert control, Lord Beerus. For your immense power as a god of destruction is a conscious force, and so merging it with Ultra Instinct is about finding synergy and not dominance, Lord Beerus, but let us continue with your training and I will show you. I knew that you were hiding more information from me, Beerus went on to then shout by quickly firing off a blast, and I'm tired of you being all cheeky with me, Whis. And so now tell me how to amalgamate these powers into one. Well, someone sounds a little grouchy, but in due time for the answers that you seek will come to you before you know it, Whis responds. But I do promise you that the key in unlocking your true potential and evolving yourself beyond your prime will come soon. But until then, I want you to try and concentrate more in putting out more of your destroyer power into each of your attacks, while also liberating your mind within the last possible second before you are attacked, so that way you can allow for your body to go and move on its own while while retaining focus in attacking me by using your all, he says. Why, you? Well, it's easier said than done, but fine, Beerus shouts upon being shown firing multiple blasts, as I'll go and give you exactly what you've asked for, so don't start complaining.
complaining when I start using everything I have against you, Whis. So you want it? Well, here goes. To which, as Whis was then shown having to avoid each and every single one of Beerus's blasts, was when Whis then went on to respond, "Good, just like that." But can you see? Notice how I'm still very relaxed, despite of knowing the fact that your attacks have gotten stronger. But since your mind appears to be all over the place, you aren't going to get very far if your mind isn't fully relaxed. Whis continues, but maybe you should go and try what Goku usually does when we train and see if that works for you. And this had done it because with Beerus now infuriated at the fact of hearing Goku's name, Beerus had immediately gone as far as to cease fire in dashing towards Whis by then responding, Oh, now that does it! What did I tell you about bringing that idiot's name during our training, Whis? Now you've done it, so don't move! With Whis responding, Oh, don't worry, my lord. I know exactly what it was that I said. And though you may in fact wield incredible power in your own right, Whis went on to respond by then avoiding all of Beerus's attacks. My main goal here is to try and get your body to be as relaxed as possible while also keeping your mind on destruction, Whis adds. And even though this also requires for your mind to be relaxed too, the only time that I need you to switch is when you're back on the attack, Whis continues. Think of it like a rotation of minds, if you will. When you're on the defensive, then relax your mind so that your body may move on its own. And when you're back on the attack, then focus your mind solely on destruction and nothing but destruction, and you should be fine. So my suggestion is for you to mainly go off of trying to swap in and out of mindsets first before you can acquire complete control over both powers at once, my lord. But with Beerus then shown having to quickly attempt to strike Whis, with Whis having to be shown getting out of the way, was when Beerus then went on to quickly respond, Oh, don't you dare go and try to play coy with me! Switching mindsets, Whis! Really? What do you take me here for? Oh, damn you! Get back here, Whis! Quit using your Ultra Instinct ability to escape me and come back here and fight me! Do you hear me? Now, where the hell did you just run off to? Oh, fine! Then I'll go and try and do what you said, but just know that you are not off the hook just yet. Do you understand? Oh, relax and let go, he says. Beerus went on to utter to himself upon closing his eyes. Well, easier said than done done, but he's right. For I've been approaching this far too aggressively and I need to ease this restless mind of mine and allow for my instincts to take over in the heat of battle. For I must learn to be calm within the heart of my own storm, Beerus continues, as I know that I can do it, but it's my anger that I seem to be having the most trouble in trying to fully control here. But even now, I can sense Whis coming and although he is moving at a pace which I'm having trouble keeping up with, if I am to count him that I must try and let go of my anger for a moment and let my mind take over. But I can't help myself and put aside my desire for destruction. Focus, focus, and listen, Beerus went on to power up by then saying to himself, I can feel him getting closer and closer and that's when I'll need to go and make my move. So come on, steady, to reserve my destructive attacks until the moment calls for it. For there he is. I can feel him, Beerus went on to say to himself upon Whis being shown dashing towards him. Yes, now. To which, as Whis was then shown attempting to strike Beerus, with Beerus shown having to now dodge each and every single one of Whis's strikes, was when Whis then went on to respond, Yes, there we are now. That's the way, Lord Beerus. And if you can keep this up and use this tactic as a way to avoid danger during a battle, then right before you attack, you will need to attack by using as much of your destructive power as you can, Beerus went on to continue to dodge, but I will go as far as to also warn you and say that if you allow for your mind to wander, even if it's just for a second during battle, then you will ultimately go right back to square one and be forced to go and try again, Lord Beerus. But at least you're finally starting to make progress by getting yourself used to it, Whis went on to continue upon spawning weights around Beerus's arms. But even if you are, your training with me is far from finished, my lord, and so, so these ought to spice things up and do the trick then, and while you appear to be getting better and better, I want to see on just how you respond when the weight of your training is significantly magnified. Well, what the heck is this? Are, are you serious right now, Whis? More weights again? That was cheap and you know it, with Whis responding, but of course. And while your body is starting to adapt to the physical demands of what Ultra Instinct requires, your mind is still anchored in the ways of destruction, which needs to be changed but not changed in a drastic sense, but more along the lines of sharp 
sharpening it, sort of like a sword, if you will. And so I want you to go and do what you are about to go and do against me again, Lord Beerus, with Beerus responding, This has to be some kind of a sick joke. We've been at it now for over an hour nonstop, and this is your solution, Whis. You're sick, you know that, and so quit smiling at me like that because I know that you're expecting for me to quit at any moment. Well, I'd hope not, because Goku wouldn't ever go and throw in the towel against me when we trained together, Lord Beerus. As once again, Beerus was not having it, because even despite with Beerus attempting to strike Whis, with Whis being shown dodging yet again, was when Whis then went on to continue. And while I don't mean any harm when I make these comments towards you, Lord Beerus, it does in fact go as far as to reveal your approach when angered, as your tendency to attack in a fit of rage while it is understandable will only go and get you so far, my lord. For the true mastery of your powers, especially when attempting to combine that with Ultra Instinct, requires more of a calculated and strategic approach rather than a very violent one, and to become the greatest, Whis continues, you must know when to unleash your fury and when to hold it back, as your challenge is to try and discern these movements, liberate your mind, combine the natures of both powers without relinquishing either, and to let the floodgates of your power be blown wide open, but only when it aligns perfectly with your instinctual responses, Whis continues. So now are you starting to see Lord Beerus? Because if you do, then my question to you is shall we continue with your training? With Beerus responding, You're out of your mind if you think that I'll just go and turn around and walk away after all that we've done to get to where we are now, and so mark my words, Whis, and remember that there is no barrier that I won't break, no limit that I won't surpass, and no challenge that I won't answer, even if it means having to go through you. And while I know that there is far more for me to achieve and much more to my power than what I'm shown wielding at the moment, I don't plan on stopping until I am number one. And so let's go, Whis, because we're not done. To which all the while, in the meantime, when then venturing back on over in seeing Orange Piccolo having to oversee Beast Gohan battle against Cell Max was when Piccolo was shown having to stand back up by then responding, Oh, this is a catastrophe that is far beyond anything that we were shown having to face before. Especially now, since we have to go and deal with Cell Max yet again, only now in his perfected form. And from the looks of it up there, Cell Max's power is starting to overwhelm Gohan's. He's struggling to hold his own up there, and every passing moment seems to be taking its toll on him, too. I can sense Gohan's strength starting to diminish out there, Piccolo continues. And the power gap that was once between them is starting to widen. Oh, damn it all. This perfected Cell Max is far stronger than we anticipated, and unless Gohan can try and find a way to beat him, then Cell is going to crush him. But there has to be some kind of a way for us to be able to gain some leverage over that monster, but how is the question? Could that God of Destruction have been hinting at Cell Max's weakness being the same as it was before while he was incomplete? For it must be, and so unless there is something else that we aren't seeing, Piccolo continues, then there's no way that Gohan is going to be able to hold out long enough to survive up there against him. And so maybe that's the key. Maybe it's the top of his head that is his weakness again. But we have to go and hurry before it's too late and find out. Switch back on over with Gohan and Cell as Gohan was shown having to miss one of his punches upon having to attempt to strike Cell was when Perfect Cell Max went on to then respond, Your performance is nothing but a disappointment to me, Gohan. And here I was hoping that you'd go and give me more than a challenge, especially when considering how you were so confident in your power before. But my question here is where is that overblown power of yours now? Because despite this new power of yours, you are just as weak as you were before. And so you may fool the others with your so-called new strength, but I see right through you. And what I see Perfect Cell Max went on to get behind Gohan by then winding his arm back by responding is what I've always seen when I looked into your eyes, Gohan. Despite you being far older than you were when we first battled, you are still the scared little boy at your very core no matter how powerful you become, Gohan. And that, my dear boy, will never change between us. But fortunately enough, before Gohan's body was then shown having to hit the ground as Gohan went as 
farce to break his fall was when Gohan then went on to shout, No, that's not true, and I can't let him use this moment to get inside of my head and weigh me down now, and especially not now. You aren't going to beat me as easily as you think, Cell. But then, it was only just as Gohan went on to look on up in the sky and noticing a barrage of energy blasts raining down on him was when Perfect Cell Max then went on to respond, Oh, don't you worry, for I'll be the judge of that, and so we'll see which one of us will remain, but if you think that I'm done with you, then you have another thing coming, Gohan. As seconds later, with Gohan being shown getting into a defensive position and having to endure all of Cell's attacks, was when Gohan then went on to utter, I can't let him take my pan away from me! I must fight back and break through! Surely you can somehow go and find a way to power yourself out of my attacks, can't you say in? Because you and I both know that you can't keep your guard up like this forever. And so how will you respond, Cell Max questions? Can you even respond? Because I think that you are at the limit of your power, Gohan. Oh, too strong. He just keeps coming, but I can't let him stop me from reaching her. And I can't let Lord Gardox break me down and win, Gohan says. There has to be a way and I must find it. I must go and find it before it's too late because I don't know on how long I can keep this going like this. I'm losing ground against him. But then, it was only from out of nowhere through the smoke where Perfect Cell Max was then shown having to make his way in and punching Gohan in the stomach with Piccolo having to then chime in. He can't do it. Gohan's fighting with everything he's got, but it's still not enough to make a difference here. Cell Max's relentless assault is too much for Gohan to handle, and I'm starting to see the strain in Gohan's movements during the battle as well, and he's beginning to lose more and more power faster than he can muster, for this is now starting to turn into a one-sided battle. <laughs> How are you, you able to move in like that and cut through my guard like this, Gohan questions? The question is not about how, but mainly about why, Gohan Perfect Cell Max responds. Why is it that you were able to acquire yet another new transformation, yet fail in using the nature behind this power to stop me? Well, I'll tell you why, because you are weak, both physically and mentally, Gohan. You should have known that in a true test of strength, one-on-one, -on -one, you could never beat me, Cell Max continues. It's a bitter realization isn't it? That without the aid of those who you cling on to, you are utterly insignificant. You've always needed for someone to save you, to guide you, but alone you falter and fail. And today, today you've proven my very point by revealing who you truly are, Cell continues. And what you amount to is nothing more than dead weight, Gohan. And with that god of destruction breathing new life into me, you are without a hope of beating me. As Pan went on to oversee her dad having to tremble and having to fall before Cell Max by then responding, Papa, no! Please stand back up and fight, Papa! Please don't let that monster hurt you like this anymore! Why are you doing this to my Papa and Uncle Piccolo, Mr. Green? With Gardox responding, Why? Because it's fun. That's why, little girl. And I just love watching Beerus' most revered and powerful warriors suffer, especially if it's on behalf of Beerus's name, so that's why. Now sit down, little one. To which back on over with Perfect Cell now shown having to extend his arm out in looking to destroy Gohan once and for all was when Cell then went on to respond, and now, before I go and finally end this, let me imprint one final truth down your broken spirit so that way you may carry it on with you through the afterlife, Gohan. You will never possess the strength that your father has to fight for those whom you love and want to protect, Cell continues. History will not be so kind to you, Gohan, as today I will go on to rewrite our history that has haunted me for so very long, as no longer will I 
might be the one who will be known to have been destroyed by you, but you will be the one who will forever be known as being the one that was destroyed by me, Gohan. As even despite the fact of having weight being shown having to weigh Beerus down, despite Beerus being shown doing upside down push-ups, was when Beerus then went on to comment, Oh, must keep pushing, must continue to evolve myself until I become the strongest among them all. Oh, you better not have lost count on me, Whis, because if you did, then you and I are going to have some serious problems. And so now, tell me why I still need to go and train with these around my arms, Whis. With Whis responding, well, I want you to go and consider these weights as a means of something that can be used as an extension that will push you to your absolute physical limits, sire. As the additional resistance that weighs you down doesn't only go as far as to challenge your body, but it also forges you to adapt and grow stronger at a much faster pace. Which is also vital in going as far as to increase your stamina and durability in a battle as well, since you were shown lacking after letting yourself go a bit, Lord Beerus. And so I also just want you to remember that as as a god of destruction, your physical prowess is just as important as your energy manipulation abilities too, my lord. For these weights add a necessary layer of difficulty by ensuring that your body remains as sharp as your mind, so as long as you are focused enough in balancing it, of course, Whis continues, and truthfully, without a hardened and resilient body, you aren't going to make it very far in a battle against the other gods of destruction without a strengthened body, my lord, with Beerus responding, The other gods of destruction. I'll show them. I'll go and show all of them since they all seem to have forgotten as to who I am and what it is that I'm capable of. These stupid weights are beginning to annoy me, Whis. But I can't stop now. Not until I've reached the finish line. But then, it was only just when Whis was from there shown having to throw his staff towards Beerus with Beerus shown having to leap out of the way was when Whis then went on to continue. Very good, Lord. Lord Beerus, you're doing remarkably well as the fluidity and reflexive nature of your movement suggests that your ultra instinct is becoming more and more integrated within you. Very good, for your movements also appear instinctual rather than forced, Whis continues, which is exactly as to what I was aiming for, but now I want to see as to what your power is like at its absolute highest when compared to what you were shown having to show me before, Lord Beerus. So, I want you to go and while maintaining the nature of your Ultra Instinct, channel your strength and power up as much as you can, Whis says, as I want you to release your inner nature within this very moment as I also want you to raise your power up to its very highest and power through the limits that bind you while also attempting to calm your spirit, Whis continues. Think of it as life and death, if you will, and so show me which of the two you will go and choose. Will you choose to continue to live in the shadow of your former glory, Whis questions, or will you go and choose to unleash the monster that lies within you. To which seconds later then from out of nowhere within that moment as Beerus was then shown having to power up and having to break through the weights that were shown binding him was when Beerus then went on to respond, No, Whis, I refuse to falter under such conditions for I didn't claw my way to the top only to be undermined now, Beerus says. My determination is unyielding and my desire to annihilate any challenge that rises to oppose my title will become the driving force Force that pushes me beyond these limits. You want power? You want to see my full power? Well, then I'll show you power, Beerus utters, with Whis having to then quickly intervene. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on now. And what exactly do we have here? Could it be? Yes, what phenomenal energy. So could it really actually be what I think this is? Because it seems to be from what I can see, as I could also start to see something beginning to form around his body. In which, as indeed, this just so happened to have now been the case, because with Beerus now shown having to visibly change for a moment with symbols appearing around his chest, was when Beerus then went on to shout, And I will show them all what true power is! And if life or death is what you ask for me to choose, then my answer will always remain the same. Beerus went on to raise his arms up by responding, For I choose death. Destruction was what I was born to do. And if you want me to hit you with everything that I have, Whis, then so be it. And 
So if this is what you want, then I will carry on with your request and hit you with absolutely everything that I'm made of. Whether it goes and wipes us both out in the process or not, Beerus went on to then create a giant sphere of destruction above him. As my title of being the strongest destroyer among them all will forever stand the test of time once again. So you want power? Then I'll show you my full power firsthand, Whis. And since you wanted it, well, here you go, Whis. Beerus went on to then throw the sphere of destruction down at Whis. Come and take it since this was what you wanted from me. With Whis responding, what an incredible display indeed, my lord. A truly impressive feat, but, well, it'll take far more power than the one that you are using if you hope to be any sort of match for me directly. Whis went on to dash on forward. However, I will go and say that even with what I just saw, I can see that you have what it takes to evolve, but we will have to try and get you to maintain what it was that I just saw come from you. Whis went on to then dash right through Beerus' sphere of destruction by responding. Since I saw you channel this very power that I've been hoping to see come from you from within the moment, but even now, nevertheless, it's evident now that your true potential is yet to be fully realized. Whis went on to strike Beerus with Beerus shown quick enough and having to catch Whis's punch. Despite the brief emergence of whatever that was that I just saw, which only goes to show me that although you are starting to get better and better with each passing moment, there is still much for us to do in order for you to fully be shown drawing that power out on the surface, Lord Beerus. And as I do wonder on how things would go for you if maybe we have decided to include yet another sparring partner for you to battle against, but what do you think about this, Lord Beerus? An interesting idea, wouldn't you say? But until then, let us go and continue with our battle and see if adding a third member in our plans would do you any good, we says. To which all the while, in the meantime, as this was shown happening, when then venturing on over back to Piccolo, Gohan, and Perfect Cell Max, was when Perfect Cell Max was shown having to aim his arm down at Gohan by then responding, you could never understand on how badly I had waited for this very day to come, where I would go and watch you crumble for what you did to me, Gohan. But even now, don't think that for one second that I am not aware of what you're up to there on the other side, Piccolo. So I'll warn you now, if you attempt to stand in my way, Cell went on to address, then you will only be making matters worse for both yourself and Gohan if you do, Cell continues. And while you are nowhere near my level of power to begin with, I suggest that you go and stay right where you are and wait your turn, Namekian. As Piccolo went on to respond, why? So that I could allow for you to go and have your way with Gohan? Not a chance. As you should remember since my cells are a part of your genetic makeup that I would rather die than watch. And if what that god of destruction had said was true and your weakness is the same as it was when you were incomplete, then that's exactly what we'll go and use against you in order to destroy you again, Cell. In which seconds later with Orange Piccolo shown having to fire off his special beam cannon and having to land a direct shot at Perfect Cell Max was when Piccolo then went on to continue. So now there, Gohan, listen Listen, if what Lord Gardox had said was true, then his weakness is his cranium. And so we'll need to destroy his head in order for us to go and move on to the final stage of that destroyer's game. And so I need you to get back up right now and channel all of your remaining power that you have left within you and blast that monster away just like you were shown doing a few hours ago and fast. But then, it was only from within the smoke upon Piccolo being shown firing off his special beam cannon was when Perfect Cell Max then went on to respond, as smart as you are, Piccolo, I am afraid that this won't work on me again, especially now because in order for either of you to go and pull off what it was that you were shown pulling off on me before, then you will need to generate a power that is far greater than my own in order to do it, and with the way that things are looking for you, well, you and I both know that this will not happen, for not only am I the stronger warrior among us all, but even if Gohan were to be given the chance and try to make a difference in this fight between us, then he'll do nothing but fail, just as he was always shown having to fail against me before, fool. To which, shockingly enough now, from within the smoke as Perfect Cell Max was shown having to blast the hole right through Piccolo's body was when Gohan then went on to shout, Piccolo, no! What have you done? 
done, Cell! Hang on, Piccolo! Don't let him win like this! With Cell Max responding, Honestly now, did he really think that he was truly going to make a difference here against me after seeing what it was that I was able to go and do to you? The stronger fighter among you both? How pathetic. I will never understand on why you creatures tend to do these kinds of things and run the risk of getting yourselves destroyed all in the name of protecting one another, but if all this means is that I will have to start by destroying Piccolo in order to have you all to myself, then that's exactly what I will go and do, Gohan. Piccolo never truly mattered to me anyways, Cell continues, and with each of your allies that I take down, your hope of survival diminishes. For once I rid this world of all those who still might try and aid you, there will be no one left who will stand in the way of saving you from me, Gohan. And since you went and brought it up to me earlier, Cell continues, perhaps Piccolo won't be the last. Perhaps since you are trying so hard to fight in order to see your daughter once again, maybe after I'm done sending Piccolo into the afterlife, will I go and then make you watch some more as I go and do the same to your daughter, Gohan. But then, it was only from the ground up with Gohan being shown erupting with absolute power and rage upon having to hear his daughter be mentioned was when Gohan then went on to shout, No, you won't sell! That's enough! In which from out of nowhere now with Beast Gohan shown landing a thunderous shot to Cell's face and having to crack Cell's cranium by also being shown sending him flying up towards the sky was when Gohan then went on to continue, I'll tear your head clean off your body before ever allowing for you to come anywhere near my daughter, Cell! I could never let that happen and so understand that so as long as there is air that flows through my body, I will always be the first to stand in the way of your evil plan, Cell, as this is far from over. As Cell went on to then respond, How dare you? No, enough of this, you miserable Saiyan! I will not have history repeat itself a third time like how it was before. As you were never supposed to come this far in your life to begin with, and so I'm done playing around. This is impossible, Cell went on to then rub his broken face by responding. How could you still muster such power when I had you beat, Saiyan? And so crack my cranium and damage me like this. It's inconceivable. As I never would have expected for you to find such strength after beating you down. But this just goes to further prove my point and so now I know. You are a threat that must be eliminated no matter what. Cell went on to then continue. Because if I let you live, then you will only become a far greater problem than what you were before. And especially with whatever power that was that you just used to strike me with now. But by no means was Gohan going to just allow for Cell Max to do what he was just about to do, because with Gohan now being shown charging up for this special beam cannon yet again was when Gohan then went on to respond, Then I only have one shot left at destroying you, and if this is what it's going to take, then let's end this. For you might be stronger than me right now, but you will never be strong enough to break my spirit, Cell. Yes, I knew that you can do it, Papa Pan went on to then respond upon Gardox and Vodkal being shown having to watch. And I knew that you had the power inside of you to continue to fight, and so now show that monster as to what you're made of, and go and make him pay for hurting Uncle Piccolo, Papa, with Gardox responding, what? But that android had this say in beat, so I don't understand on how that mortal was able to do what he just did, but it's clear that by the looks of what is about to happen here, Gardox continues, that it'll all come down to this, so that machine better not fail me and pack that Saiyan away for good this time. So it's as it was, Perfect Cell Max went on to then clinch his fist by responding, and if this is what our battle is going to come down to, then so be it. For your ability to still channel such strength cannot be allowed to carry on. And so if this is how you want to play our little game, go on, then fine. For I will go and do on to you just as it was that you did to me, Cell continues. And I couldn't think of a better way to turn your lights off than by giving you a taste of your own medicine in return, go on. And so if this is what you wanted, then I will go and give you exactly what you want with my special beam cannon. In which within that very moment his tension was beginning to flare with Gohan now shown firing off the special 
beam cannon was when Beast Gohan then went on to shout, I will never let you win and have your way with the people that I love, Cell, no more! Yes, then let it be, Saiyan, for you had this coming for a very long time, Gohan! Now die alongside this entire planet, Cell shouts, Special Beam Cannon! To which upon this very moment, just as Beast Gohan's special beam cannon was shown colliding against Perfect Cell's special beam cannon was when Gohan then went on to utter, N No, I won't let you do this on behalf of that god of destruction, Cell! You were supposed to stay dead and never return! And so that's how it's gotta stay, and I won't give up until you are done once and for all, you hear me? Oh, too strong! I'm losing ground here and fast! I have to keep trying, no matter what! With Perfect Cell Max shouting, What happened, Gohan? Don't tell me that you're finished when we are only just getting started! Well, so much for this ultimate power of yours, huh? Because I can already feel you slipping! And so struggle all you want! But you won't be able to win And you know it Well so much for that A eh? god of destruction Gardox went on to then ask Cause with the Saiyan's power Dwindling at a very rapid pace It's only going to be a matter of time Before he is overtaken in this battle And destroyed Actually my lord Angel Bakko Went on to then quickly chime in And I wouldn't go and celebrate the Saiyan's defeat Just yet because if you happen to Just look a little closer There appears to be something about his power that is beginning to change. It's faint, but there appears to be something that is keeping him from losing out against Cell, but I wonder what. I can't let him go and do this to us like this! I won't let it happen! Even if it means that I'll need to die in order to make things right, then I'll do it, Beast Gohan utters. For my pan, for Piccolo and my father, for my brother and my friends, Give me the strength that I need to win! No, oh, please! <laughs> Hang on out there, Gohan. I'm coming too. But then, it was only just upon with Piccolo being shown opening his eyes and noticing a Sensu being in front of him was when Piccolo then went on to continue. What? What? Is that what I think it is? It's one of the Sensu beans from earlier. The one that Gohan had dropped before. The that's it. That's our final hope. Uh, hang on, Gohan. I won't let him go and destroy you, so just hang on. As with neither warrior looking to give an inch to the other, it was only just when Gohan was now shown having to lose ground where Perfect Cell Max then went on to respond. Seriously now, is this what you call true power, Gohan? Just look at you struggling to survive, yet failing to do anything that will make a difference in what is about to happen, Gohan. So does it make sense to you now? Are you starting to understand what it was that I said before to ring true, Gohan? Your entire life has always been a series of failures, one after the other, Cell continues, for you were never truly able to ever accomplish anything on your own without the need of having someone help you. Well, where are they now, Gohan? Where are your friends and family to help you against me now. You could never stand on your own two feet against me, which is why you will never be anything like your father was, Gohan. Because at least with your father, he was able to showcase a sense of resolve even when he was losing, but what about you? Where is your warrior's resolve, boy? Well, I'll tell you then, because the answer is quite simple, and that is you never had it within you to be begin with. And once you fall in a matter of moments here against me, Cell continues, is when 
I will go and turn my wrath towards your allies and your family. One by one, Gohan. One by one, I will set out to complete my mission and ensure that you are all destroyed, never to come back ever again. For you thought that you would never see my face ever again, didn't you? You thought that once you have gotten rid of me a second time, that you'd never have to face me ever again, didn't you? Well, well, just look at how wrong you were, Gohan. Only this time you will not win, and that is because you can't and you know it, Saiyan. That's not true, Cell. This is not where my story will come to an end, and if that means that I'll have to go and do all that I can to ensure my daughter's safety, then that's exactly what I will go and do. I'm not sure if this will even work, but I have to try. And so even if you're stronger than me within the moment, Gohan that went on to shout upon charging a second special beam cannon, that doesn't mean that I will fold and just back down against you until I found a way to win, Cell. To which, shockingly enough, from within that very moment as Gohan was now shown having to fire off for the first time a double-handed special beam cannon was when Cell then went on to respond, Well, would you look at that? So when pushed into a corner, you do in fact happen to still have a bit more power left in that broken body of yours, don't you? For your ability to find strength from within the brink of defeat is surprising. But, Cell went on to then continue, Now that I was able to back you into that exact corner, you are all out of power now, aren't you? Because this was your final play and a bold one too, Cell adds. As I had never seen anyone go and attempt a double-handed special beam cannon like this before, but this only just goes to show how desperate you truly are, Gohan. And so now go ahead and exert all of the power that you have left, because none of it will be enough to be what stops me. And in case you want to see that for yourself, Cell adds, then watch as I start to show you that despite giving it all that you have, including your double-handed special beam cannon, that it all still pales in comparison to me. Now witness it firsthand, Gohan, for I want you to experience every bit of what you had me experience, both when you were a child and when I was without Dr. Hedo's brain chip inside of my head, Gohan. No chance, do you hear me? You have no chance! Oh, it's too strong! I, I can't let Cell win like this! Pan needs me! Piccolo needs me! They all need me! This can't be the limit to my power! I know that it just can't be! Even if I'm driven into a corner with my back up against the wall, I know that this can't be the limit of what I'm capable of! Hang on, Gohan! I'm here, and I won't let that monster destroy you! Because this could be our one and only chance at beating him, so don't die! As this couldn't have come at a better time, Piccolo says upon being shown crawling towards the last sensu bean. And so I just can't let this moment I'll go to a waste. And while at full power, it'll give you the greatest chance of putting an end to that nightmare for good, but nerds just don't let him get into your head, Gohan. You are stronger than him. I know that you are. You have the potential to become the mightiest warrior in the universe. And I know that you can feel it deep within. And with this, I just know you can't lose. And no matter the outcome, I will never give up on you, Piccolo continues. Even if that means that I will need to go and sacrifice myself in order to tip the scales in your favor, then 
then I'll do it, and my life for yours is a trade that I'll be willing to make without hesitation, old friend. As even through all these years as I've been watching you grow and have battled alongside you, I've come to understand the true meaning of sacrifice, Piccolo continues, and if using this sensu bean to aid you means the end of my life in order to save yours, then I welcome it with open arms, kid. And so mark my words when I say that Lord Gardox will pay for what he's done. To which back on over as Universe 15's God of Destruction Gardox and his angel Vodka were shown having to oversee this event was when Vodka went on to then chime in. Oh, wait a minute here. Now hold on with Gardox questioning. What? What do you mean, hold on? What is it that you see, Vodka? With Vodka responding. Now, although I'm unsure of where the source of this Saiyan's power comes from, it looks as though my earlier hunch about his potential may in fact happen to be proven true, for I want you to watch and pay very close attention to what is about to happen with him, my lord. To which, in the meantime, even despite with Gohan being shown giving it his all in emptying out his reserves and giving it all he has, was when Gohan then went on to shout, Oh, Cell! No matter the circumstance and the difference between our power, I will not stand to have anything happen to my little Pan! She needs me now more than ever, and so you may be right about a lot of things, but I won't stop fighting you, and I won't stop pushing back against you until you're destroyed! Oh, damn it, no! Piccolo went on to then chime in. Gohan's exerting the last drops of power that he has to try and push those beam cannons into ripping Cell apart, but he's losing momentum and a lot of power while attempting to break through and fast. You know, Cell's going to try and bleed him dry before he decides to finish Gohan off once and for all. And I can't let that happen, and so hang on, Gohan. Let's just hope that this works because it's all that we have left. Old G Gohan, listen! Hurry and catch this Sensu Bean before that monster overtakes you. It's our last hope to stop that monster, and so now hurry and... Whoa! G Gohan, what's this power that I'm sensing? Piccolo went on to then freeze up. Yes, that's the way, boy, for you may try and push yourself as hard as you possibly want to, Cell Max then went on to continue, but you are all out of power, and so this is where it will all come crashing down around you. And now that you're fully depleted of your power, this is where you will be destroyed as our story finally comes to a permanent end. And so now say goodbye, Saiyan! As Gohan then went on to say to himself, Oh, it's no use! I can't! I'm all out of power and this is all that I can pull together to use against him! Oh, Cell was right! I could never measure up in being the warrior that my dad has always been! Because every time I found myself in the middle of almost finishing off my opponents, there's not I always find a way to somehow mess it all up, even against Cell Max's incomplete stage, where he almost went and destroyed everyone. And as littered as my past is with moments of failure, Gohan continues, time and time again, I was always just too afraid to take that final step into becoming the warrior that my father had always known that I was destined to be. And although I never intended, nor have I ever wanted to be that warrior? Where would all of my friends and family be if I'm all that's left to protect them? You said it yourself a very long time ago that I had the potential in becoming the strongest among us all, Dad. And I always overlooked it. And I overlooked it because I always knew that you and Vegeta would always be there in case we needed you. And now that I need you here the most, I'm left to do this all alone. And so Cell was right. I can't continue to depend on others in order to fight to save the ones that I love. I can't just let myself think that you will always be around 
forever, Dad. And without my protection, my daughter is without a future. And I could never have anyone or anything ever stand in the way of ripping that away from her. Whether that's some bygone destroyer from a long-forgotten era or an enemy of my past like Cell. And I've come way too far in my life now to ever allow for anything to happen to my loved ones, especially recently. And if I'm the only one left who can stop these nightmares from coming true, then I can't continue to rely on others to do what I should be doing for the sake of those whom I love. Because I'm the only one left who truly can. And I know that I have the strength to do it. I know that I have the strength to win. And I can't let this be another moment in my life where I fail again. Oh no, and so I can't let you, I can't let you rip them all away. I will never let you sell. To which shockingly enough now from out of nowhere, as there now appeared to be a sleeping monster that had now been awoken deep within Gohan, it was just upon a fraction of a second as Gohan's power was now beginning to overtake Perfect Cell Max's completely was when Piccolo then went on to chime in. G Gohan, I, I can't believe it. What did you just do? What is this? What? what? Impossible! N no! No, but how? You were all out of power, Cell Max then went on to shout. But you were all out of power, Gohan! Oh, damn that mortal! What just happened out there? Gardox then went on to question. I can't see a damn thing, and so did the Saiyan lose or what? Well, actually, Lord Gardox, you might want to try and open your eyes and look down from the edge, Angel Vodka went on to then respond, with Gardox then having to chime back in. And if what's not inconceivable, the Saiyan was actually able to find a way to survive. But how was he able to do it if he was already all out of power? were Gardox questions. This doesn't make any sense, but this does now confirm it. For Beerus's realm appears to be a breeding ground for warriors with the vast potential of rivaling a god of destruction in battle. And so that much now is clear, Gardox continues. And this Saiyan here, this Gohan, is one of them. And that alone irks me down to my very soul, Vatkel. But now I am able to see and since that rotten Beerus had been secretly housing such creatures with tremendous potential, I now understand on what it is that I have to do. You did it! You did it! I knew that you can do it, Papa! I knew that you were stronger than that giant monster! I just knew that you could win! Kral, you disgusting little creature, Gardox went on to then utter. You were never supposed to come this far, with Piccolo then having to chime in. N no it don't go dying on me just yet, kid. Here, eat this, Gohan. It's a sensu bean. It's the only one that we have, and so you need it. And even though I don't know what that was just now, but you made me proud, Gohan. Now hurry and eat this before that destroyer decides to try and make a move on you while you're down. To which it was only just when Pan began to realize that Gardox was beginning to tear his cards up was when Pan then went on to question... Hey, why do you look so angry, Mr. Green? Just please don't put my papa and Uncle Piccolo through any more trouble. They did all that you wanted for them to do, and so what are you about to go and do? Quiet, child, for I should have known better than to go and send the machine to do a destroyer's job. As this only now just proves on what I should have done the moment I encountered that Saiyan on your ridiculous planet to begin with. Well, I must admit that I'm honestly quite surprised surprised to see that you're still alive, Gardox went on to address Gohan by responding, as I wasn't expecting for you to actually make it this far in this little game of ours, but your cunning nature will from here on no longer be what gets you by, mortal. As from here on, we will now enter into the final and most deadliest stage of this game, and while you were courageous and strong enough to make it past
past the first two Gardox continues, you will no longer carry on any further once we enter into stage three, Saiyan. What? what? I'm alive? Gohan went on to then sit back up by responding, but how? I don't remember anything after closing my eyes just now, but hey, are you alright, Piccolo? And my power appears to be back to normal too, but how? It's a long story, kid, but we barely made it out of there in one piece, and when I awoke to find you here next to me, I gave you a sensu bean that I found on the ground during your battle with Cell, Piccolo continues, and it was the same sensu bean that you failed to catch during our battle with Cell on Earth. But don't worry about me, because it's him that you should be more focused on right now, Piccolo says, because there's no telling on what that god of destruction has up his sleeve, and now that we're back, we've got to be on guard in case he tries to pull something on us like he did earlier, with Gohan responding, right, well then don't worry about me then, because now that I'm back to full strength, I'll go and take it from here against him, Piccolo. And so now, are you satisfied by what you wanted to go and see, God of Destruction? A deal's a deal, and so now put your grudge aside for Lord Beerus for a moment, and let my daughter go. I did what you asked for me to do, and unless you're planning something within the shadows, this sick and twisted game of ours is done. And so now let her go, and I'll give you whatever it is that remains that you want, with Gardox responding, Is that so? Well, you don't get to dictate the rules around here, mortal, but maybe you didn't hear what it was that I just said, because this game is far from finished, for there is but one more stage that remains, and it is the very stage that stands in between both you and your daughter, Saiyan. So then if that's how you want to do this, Gohan then went on to shout, then hurry it up and let's get this over with, because I'm not going to wait around for you to try and trick us both into falling for yet another one of your tricks. And so now, who am I left to face off against in this final stage, Gardox? With Gardox responding, Well, isn't it obvious, mortal, for the third and final stage of our little game, we'll pit you up against none other than me. As I can assure you that any hope that you may have had of winning will no longer be within your ability to reach for, go on. As from here on, I will be your final opponent, both literally literally and figuratively. Oh, I should have known that he'd want in against you, but if what he says is true, then he's all that stands in between you and your daughter, Gohan, and so this is it. You, Gohan question, so that's your final ace card, is it? Well, fine, then what exactly do you propose here, Gohan questions? How exactly is this going to work, and how do I know that you aren't going to go back on your word and pull a fast one on me once I end up going right through you with Gardox responding, Silence, you puppets, as if you truly believe that you actually have what it takes to win. But I'll humor you by making this very clear, Saiyan, as if and only if you are somehow able to find a way to win, which you won't, then I will award you all your freedom and give your daughter back to you. However, if you lose, which you will, then not only will the child remain here with me for all her days, but in response, both you and the Namekian will forever be destroyed and ensured never to return as I will go on to wipe you both away from the annals of history for good. And that means erasing you. As Pan went on to then shout, I erase them? No, you can't just go and wipe away my papa and uncle Piccolo forever and ever, Mr. Green. And now, now, little one angel vodka went on to then point his staff out by stopping Pan. Please remain where you are, though I understand that you are upset. I want you just to trust me and stay right where you are, Vatko continues, for I can see that you are scared and that you are worried for your father as Gohan went on to transform into his beast form again, and while I would let you go, now is not the right time to wander off and reunite with your father and uncle until this battle is over. And don't worry, for I made a promise to look after you and make sure that nothing bad were to happen to you, so if you truly have faith in your father, which I think you already do, then you will wait here and wait watch as he does battle with Lord Gardox, and though I can't say much, I will go out of my way and say that you are not wrong for cheering your father on for this one final battle, little one, and so now let us wait. You know, I will admit and say that it's honestly quite rare for me to find the mortal with this much fire and determination that comes from deep within their mortal spirits, but just so you know that in the end,
then the gap between our power is far larger than you think, and no amount of mortal determination will possibly be able to bridge that together, Saiyan. For I've seen many things in my time, but to see a mortal standing before a god of destruction with this much resolve is new to me, but understand that this won't save you, Gardox continues. So it's kinda like Beerus once said, better you than me, right, Gohan? Because that's exactly what this is going to be. Your massacre, not mine. Your downfall, not mine. Your loss as Beerus's underling, and not mine. And so you may have been lucky enough to pull yourself together in overcoming my first two challenges, but now that I can fully see as to what I'll be going up against, this battle will be a piece of cake. And while Beerus believes that he could mold champions in his own image, here you stand unaware of the doom that awaits, as I will take everything away from him just as once I had everything taken away from me. And I will start with you, for I will extinguish the light that Beerus sees within you creatures, and then, then I will go on to extinguish him, leaving nothing but darkness in my wake just as it was when me and my entire universe was one erased long ago, Saiyan. As Gohan went on to address Piccolo by then responding, listen, I'll go and take it from here since I'm the one that he's mostly interested in and so don't get yourself involved in this, Gohan says. And with how he tried to use my daughter as bait against me, he's mine, Piccolo. With Piccolo responding, well, I can't make any promises out there, especially if I see it that you're in grave danger out there against him, but do what you must and go show that god of destruction as to what you're made of and don't hold anything back against him, especially after after with what he did, Gohan, so I'll be watching, with Gohan responding, my plan on it, Piccolo, and so I don't know how many times I have to go and tell you that I'm not one of Lord Beerus' students, Gohan says, nor was I ever someone that Lord Beerus had ever kept close to him, but the fact that you continue to ramble on about how badly you want to try and get back at him over his comments towards you following your erasure, only goes to show and highlight your fragile ego, Lord Gardox. You call yourself a god of destruction, but yet you stoop as low as to use innocent lives is bait and that's a coward's move. Not a god of destructions, Gohan says. And now for your sake, I hope that being erased for this long hasn't caused you to grow rusty because I'm about to introduce you to a level of pain that you have never went and experienced before by the hands of a mortal. And so now I'm ready. Now make your move. As an irritated Gardox went on to then respond, Oh, really? Well, I can already see that you have quite the mouth on you given how you must have inherited this trait from Lord Beerus. But I like your enthusiasm, Saiyan. And so I'm hoping that you can keep it during our fight because nothing is going to bring me more joy than to watch you eat those words, mortal. But now remember, Saiyan, as it won't be a matter of if, but rather when you lose, for you can go and kiss everything you love and all those whom you've held near and dear to your hearts goodbye. And with the final challenge of my three stages of hell game underway, Gardox went on to continue by then being shown dashing towards Gohan. This will forever be known from this day forward as the last place that you will ever have the chance to see. And as your pathetic destroyer once said, better you than me, right mortal? Now show me what your power can do. To which seconds later with Beast Gohan then shown having to put his guard up with Gardox being shown smashing right into it was when Piccolo then went on to chime in. So, I don't like this scenario that Gohan is placed here at all. For he isn't accustomed to brawling against the god of destruction, let alone one that we haven't ever seen or heard from before. And so I hope that he could pull through on this one, because I can already tell that this isn't going to be easy. So, you were fast enough to see my attack coming by putting up your guard, huh? Gardox went on to address Gohan by responding. I could do that in my sleep, and so don't gas yourself up over something as unimpressive as that, mortal. As Gohan then went on to respond. Bro, enough! I'm sick of listening to you run your mouth and so stop treating this as it's some kind of a sick game. And so now show me what you've got so that way I can hurry and be done with you and get back into reaching my daughter. But even then, despite with Beast Gohan's best efforts with Gohan shown attempting to strike Gardox with Gardox shown avoiding each and every single one of Gohan's punches was when Gardox then went on to respond. Whoa, now this is what I'm talking about, but you are far too slow if you hope to make contact here against me. But why are you in such a rush when the final round of our game is only now just getting started, Gardox questions. Surely you don't think that I'm in any 
sort of rush to end this as quickly as you are now, do you say in? Cause that really wouldn't be a whole lot of fun now, would it? And do you want to know why? Cause I want to go and get as much out of you that I possibly can before I go and decide as to when I've had my fun with you, say in. And with how slow you seem to be moving since you appear to be having trouble in touching me, you will never manage to get a hold of your precious daughter with laughable speed like that, mortal. So what's wrong? I thought you had luck here on your side against me because it sure doesn't seem like you're getting lucky to me, you chump. Oh, he's toying with him at this point, Piccolo went on to then chime in. He's toying with Gohan because he's not only trying to go and get under Gohan's skin, but he's also trying to go and get Gohan to make as many mistakes that he can while using it as leverage. Oh, damn that little troll. To which, as Gohan was then shown having to miss one of his backhand strikes was when Gardox then went on to continue. Watching you struggle to keep up like this is honestly pitiful, but I shouldn't go and expect much coming from Beerus's universe of all places, but I don't understand on how your daughter continues to root for you, Saiyan, as she should be looking up to me as her role model, a god with limitless capabilities, not you, as you're like a fish who's out of water, but don't you worry, Gardox continues, because soon enough you won't be around long enough to see it after I go and make your daughter a permanent member of Universe 15. And even though I'm sure that Beerus really wouldn't care too much, but I know that you will. Which, come to think of it, Gardox went on to circle around by plopping onto Gohan's head. Vodkel just now had mentioned that you were shown having to exert a far greater level of strength than, well, whatever the hell this is supposed to be, but I don't happen to see it. And so are you hiding it from me, or do I have to go and get your daughter here so that, but then, it was only just before Gardox even had the opportunity to finish as Gohan went on to reach on up above him and grab him Gardox by his body was when Gohan then went on to respond, I told you before and so I will go and tell you one last time, you ugly little goblin. Leave my daughter out of your twisted games, as this is between me and you and I plan on keeping it that way. But unfortunately enough, with Gohan being shown having to attempt to slam Gardox's body down onto the ground with Gardox now being shown having to vanish was when Gardox then went on to respond, Oh, getting a little aggressive now, are we? Well, it took you long enough to show me more of that same power that you used to destroy that android, but you'll need to be much faster than this if you hope to do any damage to me, with Gohan responding, Oh, damn that monster! Oh, he's a lot faster than I gave him credit for, but I've got to try and focus. He's small, which means that his movements are going to be a lot quicker to try and keep up with here, but I need to try and detect when and where he will be enter so that way I can catch him by surprise when he least expects it. Oh, and I can sense him on the move, but I can't tell on where he'll be coming from unless... Yes, now I know! Right there, Gohan says! In which from out of nowhere now, just as Gardox was shown attempting to strike Gohan from behind with Gohan being shown ducking on under and having to retaliate was when Gohan then went on to respond, You may be far more elusive to keep up with than I thought that you'd be, but these games and this twisted sense of revenge that you have towards Lord Beerus is going to lead you down the path to your ultimate undoing, Destroyer. And by believing that it was a good idea to use my little pan here against me that will help you, what you only ended up doing instead was digging your own grave, Destroyer. Yes, good, good. That's the way, Gohan, Piccolo went on to then shout. Remember what he tried to go and use your daughter for here, Gohan? Remember his motives along with what he tried to do to us as a means of providing him with entertainment, Gohan? And so don't stop hunting him. Give that bastard exactly what he has coming and don't stop until it's over and over for good. But it only had now looked as though Gardox had other plans because despite with Beast Gohan doing his best and having to chase Gardox up towards the sky was when Gardox then went on to respond. Oh, now don't gas yourself up just yet because one momentary instance of success will not win you the fight, mortal. And in case you assume that I am like any of those whom you've waged war with before, then allow Allow me to prove on how wrong you are to have challenged me, Gardox went on to then vanish upon having to redirect his blast. And if you want to try and showcase more of your aggressive side towards me, Gardox went on to appear from behind before having to elbow Gohan in the spine, then I will go and do exactly the same against you. Oh darn it, now I know as to why that destroyer's attack seemed like it was off, Piccolo responds. It's because it wasn't. He went and used it as a distraction to close in on Gohan's blind spot while redirecting 
his attack right back. Oh, Gohan, be careful. He's going to send the attack right back. In which that was exactly what Gardox had went and had his attack do, because upon this attack now being shown having to slam into Gohan as Gohan made his way back down was when Angel Vodka went on to then chime in. Well, I knew that Lord Gardox would go and start to show more of his aggressive side sooner or later in this battle against Gohan, but, well, my only question now is will Lord Gardox allow for the mortal to be given too much time to grow before he decides to end the battle? Because it may not be in Lord Gardox's best interest to allow for this to continue any longer than it should, but we will see. In which back on over down below as Gardox was then shown having to slam his way down and sitting on Gohan's body before addressing him was when Gardox then went on to respond, You foolish little pointy-haired Saiyan, don't you ever in your life think that you can try and one-up me like that again? And just who the hell do you think you are to go and try to talk to me with such disrespect? I am not Universe 7's God of Destruction, Saiyan. You are in my house, and I make the rules around here, Saiyan. As it was over and over and over and over again, as Gardox was then shown punching Gohan in the face with absolute fury behind his motives, was when Gardox then went on to then continue, And so you will not ever go and speak to me like that ever again, ever again, Saiyan, ever again, never. Never, never, ever again, do you hear me? Never! And so wake up, Saiyan, better him than me, huh? Better me than him, right? Well, better you than me, Saiyan, better you to suffer than me! As Piccolo went on to then chime in, Oh no, get up, go on! Get up and fight and don't let him do this to you and so now stand back up and hurry and fight back! Yes, that's right, mortal, you hear that? Stand back up and fight, stand back up and do it! Go on, do it! What's wrong, Gardox questions? Having trouble? Go on, then! Stand back up and honor your destroyer's name and fight back, Saiyan! Do it! Do it so that I may go and put you right back in your place where you belong! In which, brutally enough, as Gardox was then shown holding on to Gohan's wrist and continuously being shown kicking Gohan in the face was when Gardox then went on to continue, This isn't just a fight, but it's a schooling in the natural order of a harsh lesson that some height are simply unattainable for mortals like yourself. And so you're learning it now, aren't you? You're starting to see it now for yourself that you are no match for me and you never will be, aren't you, Gohan? Well, learn. Learn your place, mortal. Learn. That's right, learn. But fortunately enough now, within that moment, as Gohan had now found it within himself in raising his leg up to knee Gardox in the spine was when Gohan then went on to respond, No, I won't quit. Not now! Not while Pan still needs me, and so now get off of me! And so I told you once before, and I'll go and tell you again because you don't seem to get it, and so now open your ears! Open your ears and listen up as so as long as there is air that flows through my body, and so as long as my daughter is there who needs me, then I won't stop fighting you until you are destroyed! And with what it was that Cell had said, Gohan continues upon being shown dashing towards Gardox, with no one here that can help me in winning, I have to be the one to do it. I have to be the one to do it since I can't go and rely on others to do it for me. And so now, let's go! Ah, so there's more gas left in that tank of yours than I thought, huh? Gardox responds. And here I thought that I had you pinned and beat, but it looks as though you've given me all the more reasons to enact on something that I quite frankly haven't went and used in a very long time. Because not for nothing Thing, that one actually hurts. But all right then, you little punk, bring it. That's right. Come on now, Gardox sinisterly went on to then respond. That's right. Yes, right this way. You don't want to disappoint your daughter now, do you, Saiyan? So come on. That's right. Do as you just said and continue to fight me until I'm destroyed. Come on. But here's a little word of advice for you in the meantime, Gardox then says, as whatever you end up doing, and no matter how badly you want to go and try and defeat me, do yourself a really huge favor and try not to go and take your 
your eyes off of me. And so I hope that you aren't allergic to dust because here's a little destroyer's magic for ya. As this was bad because from out of nowhere, the moment upon with Gardox being shown throwing this destroyer's dust into Gohan's eyes and momentarily having to blind him was when Piccolo himself had now decided to get involved in not having to stand for such tactics being used on Gohan as Piccolo then went on to quickly respond, Oh no, I can't just stand around here and watch this god of destruction continue to do this to you, Gohan! I won't allow you to go and continue to have your way with him like this, especially if you're going to be using underhanded tactics. You hear me? You are no true god of destruction. You are just a deranged and twisted little maniac who's hell-bent on getting revenge over words that were spoken of you but never acted upon. And so I won't have you go and take this out on Gohan anymore. Of course, Gardox responds. But the audacity to question my methods in battle as well as to challenge the conduct of my status as a destroyer is utterly laughable. For I'll go and do as I please in any battle that I find myself in, no matter the circumstances behind it. And as a god of destruction, my actions are not bound by the narrow views of right or wrong held by mortals such as you. But if you truly want to know about what I think, Gardox responds, well, this is what I think upon Piccolo being shown missing one of his strikes with Gardox being shown elbowing Piccolo in the stomach. I think I will go and do whatever it is that I want to and use whatever means that I can in order to establish my dominance in battle. Whether you want to go and agree with my methods or not, you weakling. As a blinded Gohan then went on to shout, Oh, but Piccolo! No! What did you do, Destroyer? Leave him out of this, you hear me? Pathetic. I grow tired of having mortals such as yourself question my place, Gardox continues, as if your god of destruction is any better, and so you will know your place. And so now stay right there. Now back to you, Gohan. What's the matter? Are your eyes starting to burn? Oh, the irony. Beerus thought that he was grooming a champion, but in reality, he was only setting the stage for your ultimate failure, mortal. But I have an idea. Since your daughter seems to be quite invested in our battle, of course your daughter and Vodka who are keeping an eye on us after all, and so while they watch, how about we go and spice things up a bit before I end you? You don't seem to be doing so good over there, Gohan. Having trouble keeping your eyes open over there? Yes, I bet you are. But your helplessness within the moment has opened up a whole new world of possibilities for me, many of which I haven't even went and used in a very long time, Gardox continues. And so, you should feel awesome honored because it's not very often where an enemy of mine forces my hand like this. But let it be known that your stubbornness has a price, Gohan, and I am now here to collect what you owe. Now, you may not know this, of course, but I actually have an abundance of nightmares just waiting for you. A collection of weapons and objects that I almost went and nearly forgot about, Gardox continues, but since you've reminded me of them just now, I am extremely eager to to go and use them. For you have now given me the perfect excuse to delve back into the darkest corners of my power, and by the time that I am done with you, you'll wish you had never crossed paths with me when you did, mortal. And so now allow me to go and introduce you to my many bag of wonders that I harbor within my goblin's bag, which you see here, as the question now becomes more of a question of what will I draw out of this bag rather than how I will be shown using them. And I can't wait. Oh, it burns! And just where the hell did he go and get that destroyer magic from if I was already hot on his tail? Gohan questions. Oh, he more than likely has the ability to just spawn it whenever he chooses if it didn't come from that so-called bag of his. Oh, the blinding me as a way of keeping me from turning your lights off isn't going to be something that lasts very long. And you know that it won't, Gohan shouts, because one way or another, I will get my hands on you! With Gardox responding, Yeah, 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 we'll see about that one, but in the meantime, would you look at what we have over here? I haven't seen my puppet pinger here since before the days where this universe and I were erased. But boy, oh boy, does this little item here bring back so many memories!
is, which you are about to go and become one of them, Saiyan. Now let's just see if I can remember on how to use this thing the way it's intended, because you'll be the first mortal that I went and tried this on, since of course being revived, and so... Uh, ah, yes, now I remember. So now let's go on ahead and just try this. Yes, just like that, and so now there we are now. You know, it'd be a shame if you suddenly started attacking yourself from out of nowhere while blinded by me, Gohan. For it wouldn't be the best call to make, but I'm rather curious to see on just how badly you hurt yourself in the process of doing it. And so now let's just find out and see what the outcome will be, Gardox went on to then jingle his puppet pinger. Ouch! Whoa! Now that's what you call a really scary looking punch there, Gardox went on to respond. But you really shouldn't go and beat yourself down like this, mortal Gardox continues upon having Gohan punch himself in the face. I'm the one that you said that you'd be going after, and so why are you starting to attack yourself when you should be attacking me? Whoa, and there you did it again, and again, and again. Well, isn't it just bizarre, Saiyan? Did I happen to hit you a little harder than you're typically used to that you forgot about who your real enemy is here or what? Because if this continues to go the way it does, then you'll end up destroying yourself long before I'd even get the chance to do it myself. But what do you think, Gardox questions? Is it hard to tell on which way this will go, mortal? Or should I continue to remind you of the dangers that you are facing? With Gohan responding, y You think that by trying to use my own body as a weapon against me that it'll somehow stop me from achieving my objective destroyer? Because it won't. And so now go ahead and just go and pull whatever you want out of that bag of tricks that you have there because none of it will help you, God of Destruction. None of it will help you, you hear me? And there is nothing that's going to stand in my way of tearing you apart for the nightmares that you have went and put me and my friends and family through. We are not your puppets in this sick and twisted game of yours. Destroyer, for I will not go down to you like this, you monster! With Gardox responding, Wait, you can still move on your own and open your eyes despite them burning? Well, this is a bit of a surprise to see, but if you truly think that I care about the things that I went and put your friends and family through, then guess what? You have another thing coming if you honestly expect for me to care about whether any of them live or die, and that includes you. However, our game is not quite quite done, Gardox went on to freeze Gohan in place by responding, and so why don't you just hang on tight where you are so that I may go and remind you of your place, mortal. Oh, you, you won't win! I will never let you win because I can't! But Gardox did not care because despite with Gohan being shown held in place as Gardox went about by attacking Gohan from all angles was when Gardox then went on to respond, you mortals in the seventh universe are quite the bunch, but I I can see as to where you get it from. Because the pride that I see reflecting from your very soul is the same kind of stubbornness that Beerus usually displays. Boastful and arrogant, selfish and reckless. These are all the same reflections that I see coming from you, Gohan, but at least you can take a punch. But for your sake, Gardox continues upon Gohan being shown screaming in agony. I hope that this mortal body of yours can continue to take a lot more punches because you're going to need all the strength that you can possibly scrape from the bottom of that barrel body of yours if you do go on. Well, even though Lord Gardox appears to be the one who is in complete control of this battle, Angel Vodka went on to then chime in, and I still don't like how he continues to push that Saiyan further into reaching his breaking point, and especially after seeing what we had seen earlier come from him. But I guess the only way that this will end is if Lord Gardox says that it will, with Pan having to then chime in. No, oh, please, Hey! Hang on, Papa. Please make it stop. Mr. Angel, please tell Mr. Green to stop hurting my father. And I don't want to see my Papa in this much pain, and so please tell me that he will be okay, Mr. Angel. Please tell me that my Papa 
Vodka will be all right and that nothing bad is going to happen, with Angel Vodka responding, Well, I'll honestly say that even though I didn't foresee myself having to watch over a child, let alone one that isn't even from this universe, I will say, however, that your father will be just fine if he is able to play his cards right in this battle, little one. Your father may appear broken and beaten down there, but is he, Vodko questions? Because I think not, for so as long as he maintains the strength within his heart to fight for your liberation, then he will not falter so easily in battle. Unless, of course, Lord Gardox chooses to go and put an end to him by erasing your father. But for that to even go as far as to happen, we will have to wait and see if it reaches that point, as Gardox went on to approach Gohan's body by then responding, Still alive, I see. Well, you're certainly a persistent little creature, now are you? You and your little hopes and your dreams and your aspirations of being able to get your daughter back, it's annoying to say the least. And more importantly, it isn't going to happen, and not while she has a friend in me, she isn't. And that's because your daughter isn't going to need you. Now go on, stand back up if you think that you can, and let's have another go. Oh, come on. Don't tell me that you're all out of gas, Gardox continues. Hold on there a minute. Now just where exactly do you think you're going, pal? Crawling towards your daughter's direction in hopes of reaching her, huh? Our battle isn't over, silly. So where do you think you're going when you and I are far from done here? Because since I can see that you're still crawling around down there, that means that there is still more fun that I can go and extract out of you before putting you out of your misery. And that means that so as long as you're still crawling around and breathing down there, Gardox went on to step forward in front of Gohan by responding, then our little game will only continue to be played. And so what do you think about that? With Gohan responding, I think that you're not as tough as you want to make yourself out to be because you can't keep me down. Yeah, well, wrong answer, buddy. Because I'm only keeping you around long enough so that I can get as much amusement out of Beerus' finest that I possibly can before I go and destroy you. And since you're perceived as one of Universe 7's strongest, Gardox continues, I want to go and make this as clear as I can, and that is that I am here to shatter that illusion and prove to Beerus that his universe is and always was filled with nothing more than weaklings and fools. You, the best that Beerus has to offer will crumble and with you, this false sense of security that your universe clings on to will crumble right along with you. And so maybe you did get lucky when you managed to somehow make it past my first two challenges, Gardox continues. But now that you can start to see that this is something that's way out of your league, perhaps now you can understand that you aren't going to beat me here, Saiyan. And so now get it through your head. Phew. Well, I will say that punching you around my planet sure has me breaking out in a sweat over here, as I really didn't think that you'd hold out for this long, but maybe I should change my plans. And so now how about we go and take a minute to look back inside of my bag here and see what we can find for us to use, shall we? And as I promise that it'll only take a second and I can't wait to see what we end up getting. Oh, I can only imagine so many weapons to choose from, but so little time. But I'll make sure to go out of my way and make the most of every second that you and I spend together, Gohan. And so now let's see what we can go and pull out of this bag here, with Gohan being shown sitting on up and then responding. Oh, what, what is he looking for in that bag of his again? Now I've got to find a way and try to throw him off his game before he goes and tries to use another one of his weapons against me. As Gardox then went on to respond, now this is what I'm talking about. Just look at it, would you? I can't remember the last time that I went and used this big boy in battle before, but would you just look at it saying, my goblin's mallet in all its glory. Oh, and if you thought that 
you've seen it all before, mortal. Then just you wait until you get a load of what you are about to experience once I start smacking you around my planet with this. But I am hoping, however, that you don't go down too easily, Saiyan. And that's because it'll be a real shame if I went and used this on you, only for you to melt under the pressure of its deadly power before I'd even have the chance to get started like how I wanted. Oh, you've got to keep fighting, Gohan. Don't let his vast arsenal of destroyer weapons be what breaks you, Piccolo went on to then utter. You're better than he is, and he knows that you are. That's why he's doing this. He's doing this because he's scared, Gohan. He's scared of your potential, and so that's why he wants to go and extinguish it. But even if he tries, you can't let him do it. I know that you have the power within to beat him, Gohan. As Gardox then went on to respond, Ugh, how annoying. It almost makes me want to vomit after hearing that. To say, does he always tend to do this and cheer you on this way? Because it's actually quite annoying to listen to. As Gohan then went on to shout, that's enough. But then, it was just as Gardox was shown having to avoid Gohan's key blast by them being shown winding up his mallet as Gardox then went on to respond whoa there now that was close but would you go and look at that you still have some fight left within that broken body of yours now do you well then Saiyan what do you say we go and start cracking some heads around here and find out if yours is worth giving it another whack or two go on because by the looks of it you are far sturdier than I imagined you'd be and especially since you are from Beerus's universe of all places. However, as sturdy as you all and with all of the potential that you harbor as being a mortal warrior who carries with him destroyer rivaling power, you will never be able to hold your own and pull your weight in battle against the likes of me, Gohan. Oh, it's no use, Piccolo then went on to chime back in. This destroyer is dragging this out to make Gohan suffer a slow and painful death on purpose, and so he isn't going to stop either, but but Gohan hasn't dropped out of his beast form just yet, which means that his willpower and his spirit to fight still yearns for his desire to save his daughter, but he has to try and dig down deep within himself and fast if he hopes to actually do it here. But it was simply no use, because despite with Gardox being shown swinging his mallet around and dropping Gohan down onto the ground before using his mallet and firing off energy blast, was when Piccolo then went on to chime back in, because if Gohan isn't able to do what he did before and draw out that hidden power that he used against Cell to stop Lord Gardox, then that destroyer will likely continue to wear Gohan down until he finally destroys him for good. But even then, within that very moment, as Gohan was laying down on the ground by having all of these energy blasts being shown having to ram themselves into Gohan's body, was when Gardox then went on to continue. It hurts, doesn't it, mortal? It hurts knowing that you are utterly powerless to do anything in your nature to stop me from ripping everything away from you now, doesn't it, Go on. And so as it was during the days of when I had everything ripped away from me, now it's your turn to feel my pain, Saiyan. Because it's like your puny god of destruction once said, better you than me, right, Gohan? Better you than me, right? Well, I couldn't agree more with that sentiment, because better are you than me right now, Saiyan? But it was only during Gardox's act and having to blast Gohan while he was down as Pan attempted to make her way down below, with Angel Logical having to prevent Pan from having to leave and responding. That's far enough, little one. Please don't make me have to tell you again. You are not safe out there, and so therefore you will not get yourself involved in a battle that does not require you, and so now please stay. As it was only moments later back down on the battlefield, with Gardox being shown having to walk away by all also being shown acknowledging his mallet and leaving Gohan down onto the ground by having to be surrounded by the debris around him was when Gardox then went on to continue. Now that ought to bury that runt beneath the ashes of his miserable failures, but I gotta say, I sure did get a good whack at cracking that Saiyan across the head when I did, and I loved every single second of it as it happened. And 
so now he's as good as dead or at least will be soon if he didn't already perish by his injuries and so good riddance don't let this be where you fall papa i believe in you and i know that you have the power to stand back up and win i won't give up on you papa pan shouts but then it was only just when gohan had opened his eyes and having to overhear his daughter cry out for him was when gohan then went on to respond pan i hear you and i won't let you down as gardox then went on to chime in wait you're still standing but how is it that you're back up on your feet like this already and what is this strange power that i sense that's coming from you as gohan then went on to respond you are in way over your head now god of destruction i said it once and so i will go and say it to you one last time no matter what you do and no matter how hard you try and crush me you will never succeed and as long as my daughter remains in danger i will never stop hunting you until she is safe and so now god of destruction this is where i will break you once and for all i want you to understand one thing before i tear right into you destroyer and that is for all of the damage that you've done and for all of the pain that you've caused onto myself and all those whom i love i want you to remember my face destroyer because it'll be the last face that your eyes will ever have the chance to see from this day onward for you should have ended my life when you had the chance because this is where you messed up and messed up bad gardox and these stupid little games of yours along with the tyranny that you tried putting us under is over and because you continue to push us into a corner with no way out gohan continues this is where you will find out firsthand on what it's like to be driven right through with gardox questioning to be driven right through as in you do you honestly believe that you have what it takes as a mortal warrior to drive yourself through and defeat a god of destruction such as myself after taking this much damage for you've got to be joking as you are either delusional from the beating that you've taken or you have simply lost your damn mind and for you to honestly stand there and believe that you have what it takes to take much more of what you just did is ludicrous and so i'm calling your bluff as pam went on to then shout no thank goodness that you're okay papa i knew that you had the power to continue oh thank you for not giving up on me papa and so now go and show mr green over there on why you are my papa and why you are the best with gohan responding no one destroyer and i mean no one ever threatens my family and lives to brag about the harm they've caused no one god of destruction and so you wanted to see if my power was worthy of being compared to yours then go ahead and take a look and witness my full power and the very nature of who i am brought forth onto the surface gohan then went on to power up with rage by responding and so you wanted to see if mortals had what it took to match or surpass a god well here it is and so now prepare to be destroyed gardox amazing piccolo then went on to suddenly chime in that a boy gohan i knew that you had the power within you to match that destroyer and put an end to his nightmare for good and so just don't go and lose yourself in the process of trying to make him suffer like how he tried doing with us and so now beat that runs at his own game so that way we could all go home piccolo continues you came a very long way since you first started gohan and you are without a doubt one of universe seven's brightest and most powerful warriors that's out there piccolo continues and so now go and show that destroyer on what we're all about and why we mean business but then it was suddenly now from out of nowhere with piccolo now being shown teleported near angel vodka and pan was when piccolo went on to then question oh whoa hey what the what just happened with pan having to shout uncle piccolo uncle piccolo yay you made it you're okay oh i was so worried for you out there but you're okay pan went on to then lunge towards piccolo by hugging him thank you for coming all this way with papa to help me i don't know what i would have done without you i missed you with piccolo responding well don't sweat it kiddo you know your dad and i would never let anything ever happen to you and so i'm glad that you're all right and still in one piece pan thank you for never losing faith in us piccolo continues and so as long as your dad out there still has the power within his heart to keep on fighting 
chasing, then we will never stop chasing you down until you're finally home where you belong, Pan. And so you can always count on us to be there for you when you need us the most. And so now hold my hand and sit tight. With Angel Vodka having to chime in, tell me something, Namekian. Were you able to also see what I had seen come from your ally during two very separate yet very specific occasions that happened to involve his power? Well, strangely, I did, Piccolo responds. Once during Gohan's final moments against Perfect Cell Max, and the other was just now before he went and powered up to face Lord Gardox, and so why is it that you ask? With Vatko responding, your friend appears to possess a far greater level of power to him than even he is able to actually realize. And if misdirected or mismanaged, could prove to be rather problematic if he isn't able to control it, Vatko continues. And so I say this to also say that if Gohan were to use this very power as intended, then he will defeat Lord Gardox. However, I fear that before he even reaches such a point, Lord Gardox may catch on and want to erase Gohan on the fly if he is deemed to be a danger to Universe 15, and so I am only telling you now to be very cautious. Gardox! Gohan shouts, with Gardox having to suddenly respond, God, what in the world? But then, it was only just before Gardox even had the opportunity to finish his sentence was when Beast Gohan then went on to punch Gardox in the face by then shouting, Enough! This is for every stressful breath that you went and put my little daughter through after coming on to our world and taking her from me. And so now get back here right now because you and I are not done. Isn't that right? Isn't that what you went and said, Destroyer? Well, come on then. With Gardox quickly responding, ah, All right, now you've done it, Saiyan. Now you're starting to annoy me far more than what you were shown doing prior. And so now you want to do this the hard way now, do ya? Well, all right then. Now don't say that you didn't see this coming, except this time I won't stop blasting you until you are a pile of jello on the ground. But even then, despite with Gardox being shown having to use his puppet mallet in blasting Gohan several times over with Gohan being shown dashing right through it, was when Piccolo went on to then shine back in. Amazing. I don't know where he gets it from, but if Gohan is able to keep this momentum going, then there's no way that this god of destruction will be able to stop him, but I'm curious if tanking all of Lord Gardox's attacks like this will end up slowing him down in the long run if this keeps going, with Angel Vodko chiming in. Well, that all depends. You see, while it's undeniable that Lord Gardox possesses superior strength when compared to Gohan, there is an intangible quality to Gohan's spirit that's beginning to turn the tide in their battle, Vodko continues. His courage, his heart, his unyielding determination, they are not just mere attributes of his, but they are weapons in their own right capable of nullifying almost anything that stands in his way. And so thus, this is a testament of Gohan's nature by proving on why he is the chosen candidate for this battle, and the best one for Lord Gardox at that. However, despite this being the case, if and when Lord Gardox decides to take matters a bit more seriously down there, is when you will only then begin to get a better idea on just how ruthless and just how dangerous Lord Gardox can truly be in a battle, but for Gohan's sake and for the sake of the child and yourself, Namekian, let's just hope that this ends quickly so that way this can be done, with Piccolo responding, well I don't think that Gohan will allow for this to go and reach that point, and especially if he knows that Lord Gardox is in a vulnerable position like the one that he is currently in now, and so I think he knows exactly what to do, Piccolo continues, just like that kid, and so now go and make that little troll pay for what he went and put us all through, with Vodko continuing, well actually I wouldn't go and jump the gun just yet, for I think that Gohan has finally gotten Lord Gardox's attention. Alright, Saiyan, you want to go and play rough? Well, fine then, Gardox continues. Let's play rough. Because now you are really starting to get under my skin. And I will not have you embarrass me like this, mortal. To which as soon as Gohan and Gardox were then shown having to dash towards one another yet again was when Gardox then went on to continue. Mortals could never be allowed nor be given the opportunity to ever compete with the Destroyer's power, 
and that's where your governing destroyer went wrong. Beerus allowed for his faith in you creatures to cloud what was most important among our kind, and that was preserving our status no matter the cause, to which Piccolo then went on to respond, Oh darn, I was afraid of Lord Gardox going and turning this around on Gohan, but he can't give in no matter what that destroyer tries to do out there, with Angel Vodka chiming back in, though the situation may appear tough, originally all Lord Gardox had wanted was someone to play with given how he was always all alone here, but once he was able to catch wind of the power which some of Lord Beerus' mortals were housing, well that was when his entire focus had shifted in wanting to rip that away from Lord Beerus' universe, just to simply go and get back at Lord Beerus over the comments that were made, with Piccolo responding, and to think that all of this was simply to spite Lord Beerus, oh it's another reason on why Gohan has to win. But even given the fact that with Gohan and Gardox now being shown going back and forth with Gardox now shown punching Gohan in the stomach was when Gardox then went on to continue, I will say that you are good, far better than I expected for you to be, but you are going to have to be far better than what you are now if you wish to overthrow me, peasants. And to further put these efforts of yours to rest for good, why don't I go and show you on why you were never the one who was in control? To which as soon as Gardox was now able to turn the tides against Gohan by from that point them being shown having to kick Gohan in the stomach was when Gardox then went on to continue. And so why don't you back on up and watch as I show you on who is truly in control here, Saiyan. Yes, that's right. Try and single me out now, will you? Well, I'll show you. Gardox went back into his bag of tricks by then responding. You may have been useful to Beerus, but here you will know your place and come to understand that you are just my pawn. A silly little mortal man who is only best served as being my personal entertainment and nothing more. And so now let's see, where is it? Where did I go and put that thing? Where is it? Ah, yes, there we are now. And so this ought to stop you in your tracks, and so now watch. Watch as I go and twirl you around the way I want and rip you apart before I decide to destroy you. Or maybe I should just go and destroy you now so that way I could be done with you, Gardox went on to freeze Gohan in place by responding. Yes, decisions, decisions. What's wrong? Struggling to move again, are we? Well, you want to know what I think? I think we should go and end this battle with a bang, and that's by having you blast yourself into a million pieces. Now that ought to be a sight to see. And so now let's just see if we can get you to channel your most powerful attack up there and go and aim that energy blast right towards your head. As a struggling Gohan then went on to respond, he's going to try and channel my most powerful attack and have me redirect it towards myself and having me take myself out? No. Oh no, I can't have him go and do that, especially since I'm all that's left and coming in between him and Pan. And so I've got to try and hurry and act fast before he could go and pull this off. Wait a second. Yes, I've got it. Since I can still move my arms, then this is my one and only chance to take advantage of him while I can. Oh, as if I'm going to give you the time of day to even try, Gohan shouts. And so you can guess again, Solar Flare! God, just what in the world is this? How did I not know that the Saiyan was capable of using a blinding technique against me? I can't see a damn thing up there! And why does it feel as though he's putting his energy together for something while I can't see? Oh, just what are you planning on using on me from up there, Saiyan? Oh yes, hurry, Gohan Piccolo then went on to quickly shout. Now's your chance to blast that destroyer with everything you've got and put an end to this nightmare once and for all. And so don't let this moment slip through your fingers. To which, as Gohan was then shown charging up for his Kamehameha, was when Gohan then went on to respond, Not a chance. And given the opportunity that I have right now, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't have a chance in the world of escaping this one. This is what you get, Destroyer. This is what you had coming. As Gardox then went on to quickly respond, How'd you like 
hell if you'll be given the chance to blast me with that. As I've seen all that I wanted to come to see from you, and so I'm done with it, mortal. Now watch as I crush your dreams right before your child's very own eyes, you peon. So no matter how powerful you think you are, you will never be strong enough to survive this, Hawkeye! No, 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 Gohan! Do not come in contact with that attack of his! He's going to try and erase you if you come in contact with that, Piccolo shouts. So you've got to get out of the way right now if you aren't able to blast right through it! As Vodka went on to then chime in, interesting, to which surprisingly enough as Gardox's Hakai was then shown having to go right through Gohan was when Vodka then went on to continue, well, although I didn't think that the mortal would go and find an escape method if he wasn't planning on already blasting right through Lord Gardox's Hakai, but he did. That's right, now done, what the? But how did you just do that? Gardox shockingly went on to then question. You knew, didn't you? You tricked me. To which from out of nowhere, similar to that of his father, with Gohan now being shown having to teleport behind Gardox was when Gohan then went on to continue. Looks like you aren't the only one here who has a few surprises up their sleeve, Destroyer. And so now face the consequences behind your actions, God of Destruction. This one here is for my little girl. In which moments later with Gohan's massive Kamehameha now being shown having to make contact with Gardox was when Piccolo went on to then respond. Oh, what tremendous intensity. I haven't seen Gohan unleash this much power with this much force behind it since the early days of when Gohan had used all of the power that he had when he was a child to put an end to perfect cell after Goku was destroyed, but will it work? With Angel Vodka responding, you know, I find it quite remarkable to see how mortal warriors such as this one are able to actually go the distance and achieve such grand levels of power, but even then, there are still levels in between gods and mortals, but what do you think, Namekian? Do you think that Gohan has won, with Piccolo responding, well, I'm not sure on what the outcome is going to be, but I think he got him down there, yes! I think Gohan was actually able to do it, for Lord Gardox wasn't able to see and respond to Gohan's counter fast enough, and so I think he did it! Well, I would hate to rain on your parade so soon, Namekian Vodko responds, but not only is this battle far from over, but you might want to check besides you, with Piccolo asking, besides me? Why? What are you? Oh no, Pan! Where's Pan? Don't tell me she- Oh, how I feared that he would go and try this on the boy, Vodko quickly responds, but this only just means that Lord Gardox isn't looking to lose, to which back down below, surprisingly enough, behind the smoke, was when from out of nowhere as the debris began to settle on down was when Gardox then went on to be shown smiling and responding, well, 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 I'll admit you almost had me there for a moment, Gohan, but I'm always two steps ahead no matter what the odds are that are stacked against me, but if you think that I'm all out of surprises, then you're in for a very rude awakening, because I still have a few more tricks up my sleeve that I'm sure or you will just utterly die over. To which, shockingly enough, as Gardox was from there shown having to create a barrier and preventing himself from being hit by Gohan's Kamehameha wave, not only was Gardox shown still mobile and functional within the barrier, but now Gardox was also now holding on to Pan in his hand, as Gardox then went on to continue, well, because truthfully, I wasn't expecting for things to reach such critical conditions during our battle, but in this game of power and destruction, it's not just about strength, but it's about leverage, Gardox continues. And as you can see with your very own eyes now, I am the one who wields the greater leverage in our battle, mortal. And what better leverage than that which you hold dearest, right, Saiyan? And so now, what exactly are you going to do? You wouldn't dare try and attack me after knowing your child would be placed in harm's way now, would you? Or are you truly that crazy and you'd be willing to risk her life, all in the name of besting me in battle and being granted your freedom. I wonder... W what are you doing, Papan? How did you just... No, no, why? Why are you doing this? Gohan then went on to 
quickly freeze in place by shouting, Don't you dare think about hurting her! It's a cold world that you and I live in, isn't it? But sometimes those who are the smartest tend to always survive the longest, mortal. But just you wait, because there's more. Oh, yes. And so just you wait. But in the meantime, are you ready to call it quits? Say in with Gohan shouting, You let her go right now or I swear on my life I'm going to tear your heart out, destroyer! And so now let her go! I'm the one that you want and so now leave her out of this right now! Now, now, it's better if you lower that tone of yours when you speak to me before I go and lower it for you, Gardox responds. But instead of putting you down for it, I would advise that you think about your daughter's life before you go and make empty threats by trying to go and want to take mine, Saiyan. And so now surrender yourself over to me and pledge your life in exchange for hers, or I will see to it that her existence ends right before your very own eyes, friend or not. So now what's it going to be, Gardox questions? A life for a life, eh? Fair trade? Oh, the hell with this! Piccolo then went on to quickly shout by transforming into his orange form and dashing on forward. Has that little bastard lost his mind or what? That's a child! No! Pan, hang on! But then, it was only just before Piccolo was able to insert himself down onto the battlefield was when Angel Vodka went on to grab onto Piccolo by then responding, No, you will not. You will trust in my judgment and remain here with me and wait and see what will come out of this battle, Namekian. As this battle does not involve you for it's between them to settle, but I want you to also look closer, Vodko continues. Do you see it? Do you see the change that is beginning to take place below? In which, similar to before with Gohan's physical appearance now shown slowly changing upon Gohan now being shown powering up, was when Gohan then went on to shout, I will not let you hurt her, you monster! To which suddenly from out of nowhere with Pan now shown having to bite down on Gardox's hand upon Gardox being shown having to choke her was when Gardox then went on to shout, what are you doing? She bit me! That little child actually bit me! I was too careless and too caught up within the moment. Pan went on to then shout upon Gardox being shown looking at his hand. But even then, Gohan was not having it because with Gohan now shown dashing right towards Gardox's direction and having to then be shown punching Gardox in the face was when Gohan then went on to shout, Now you're mine! You're Wait, I see it now, Piccolo then went on to quickly chime back in. There it is again, that weird-looking, freaky form of Gohans. Now I understand as to what you meant by what it was that you said, but will it last? Well, it's hard to say for sure, but it doesn't appear to be the case, Vodko responds. As it does, however, look as though it was enough to really go and do damage to Lord Gardox, but I do believe that something is about to change, with Piccolo responding, Change? Change as in how? What are you able to see that I can't? Oh, what in the world was that just now? No, no, I can't risk this mortal going and doing what he just did against me again. And so this is my universe, Saiyan, and I'm the one who gets to decide on what will happen around here. Gardox went on to then spawn another goblin card by responding. I will need for you to go and stay close by. Vodka went on to then dash forward by grabbing onto Piccolo's shoulder. And do not attempt to leave my side until we are safely transported, Vodko continues. As although Lord Gardox had intended to use another one of his goblin cards to trick Gohan into sending him off into another world similar to the ones which you were both in just a little while ago, but with his card now unstable, Vodko went on to then surprisingly grab onto Pan by also holding onto Piccolo. There is no telling on where they are both about to go, and so we must not lose them while this continues. So now hold on, everyone, because this may end up proving to be a rough landing by the time we emerge right through and onto the other side of wherever we will be. To which all the while in the meantime, when then venturing back on over into Universe 7, in seeing as to how Beerus was now beginning to do setups with Whis being shown having to oversee by counting this, was when Whis then went on to respond, My word, very good, Lord Beerus, for you have managed to crack 500 million sit-ups in record time, and so shall we go and do it again? With Beerus responding, Yes, we'll continue until we've crossed well into 1 billion and resume our sparring training right after, if anything, Beerus continues. But just do make sure that 
you just keep on counting and but then it was only suddenly just then from out of nowhere to both Whis and Beerus's surprise from behind them as Beast Gohan and God of Destruction Gardox were shown having to emerge within their universe and battling was when Beerus quickly went on to then chime back in God just what in the world was that just now wait a minute hold on there for a second Whis surely that can't be now could it it is isn't it well judging based from the looks of things Whis responds your guess is as good as mine Lord Beerus as it only now appears as though Sun Gohan and Universe 15's God of Destruction Gardox appear to be locked in a very intense battle, but why this is the case is truly a mystery as I'm starting to wonder on how they even got here. To where the moment Beast Gohan was then shown having to mount control over Gardox and from that point then being shown smashing down upon his face was when Beerus then went on to continue, well those two shouldn't be here Whis, but now I can't help but wonder on why they are fighting either and so now I'm confused. Well, it looks as though they're not alone here either, Whis continues, because Gohan's daughter Piccolo and my brother Vodkal are also here too, with Beerus having to then respond, All right, something's up and one of you better start explaining right now, as Vodkal then went on to then chime in, My apologies for the sudden arrival, Lord Beerus, as Lord Gardox had appeared to briefly lose control and redirect us back into this universe, but nevertheless, Lord Gardox had taken interest in Sun Gohan, and well, here we are with Orange Piccolo having to then respond, and since I couldn't help but overhear you ask about it, what Gohan is currently using in battle is a new beast form that he went and unlocked recently on Earth, Piccolo says. But more on that a little later, Lord Beerus, and to make a very long story short, it was actually Lord Gardox who went and had pushed us all into reaching this very point, especially with Gohan, since Lord Gardox had wanted to pay you back over a few comments that you had made a very long time ago when Gardox and his universe were originally destroyed with Beerus responding, ah so that's what this is all about, revenge a eh, Gardox? But Gohan was not shown stopping because it was only just as Beast Gohan was continuously and ruthlessly shown having to smash his way down in elbowing and punching Gardox over and over again was when Gardox went on to stick his arm up by then responding, that's enough you foolish creature get your disgusting undeserving little filthy mortal hands off of me and just die Saiyan Haka! But then it was only just before Gardox even had the opportunity and from there being shown erasing Gohan from existence was when Beast Gohan had then proceeded in grabbing onto Gardox's arm and slamming it on down by proceeding to elbow Gardox in the face by then responding, Oh no you don't! Like hell if I'll just stand here and have you try and erase me before I went and made you pay for all of the pain that you have caused me and my family destroyer! You you tried hurting her. You tried using my daughter as a shield against me. You were going to end her life. You were going to rip her away from me, you bastard. As you tried to burn my entire world down onto the ground, but you failed. And so now I'm going to go and burn yours down to the ground, Destroyer. What was it that you had said you held against Lord Beerus, Destroyer? Better him than me. Right? Right, Destroyer? Well, better you than me. You were the one who wanted this, Destroyer. You were the one who kept pushing me more and more, and look where it's got. And you, Gohan, then began to change by questioning. So now do something about it if you think that you can. Go on, do it. Try and use my daughter as a shield in your twisted game now, God of Destruction. Try and go and erase her now. Go on, do it. It, it hurts, doesn't it, Destroyer? It hurts, doesn't it? You did this, Gohan then went on to continuously elbow Gardox in the face. This is all your fault, and so I'm going to make sure that you never went and found me when you did. And to use my daughter as bait against me and to threaten her very existence is something that I will make sure that you suffer for. And so do you feel that? Do you, Destroyer? With Beerus then questioning... Hold on now, Whis. Are you seeing what I'm seeing take place with the Beast Saiyan 2? His energy appears to be spiking more and more, and he also appears to be changing a bit as well. And so what's 
going on with Whis responding, Why yes, I do, but if this continues to go the way that it does, then Gohan is going to end up beating Lord Gardox to death, as Pan went on to then rush on over towards Gohan by then shouting, No, no, please stop, Papa, you don't have to do this, that's enough, Papa! Papa, please look at me, this isn't you, this isn't what you should do, Pan went on to then continue, and I know that Mr. Green hasn't been the nicest to us, and I know that he caused us a lot of pain, but doing to him as he tried doing to us isn't going to change anything, Papa. And so please don't go through with this violence. You've always stood on what was right, Papa, and so please don't. And so I don't want you to hurt anyone or be hurt yourself, Papa, so please find it within your heart to forgive Mr. Green. Please, you beat him already, Papa. Pain went on to then grab onto Gohan by hugging him as Gohan then went on to come back to his senses. He made a really bad mistake, and I don't think that you should do this. You're not like him, and so please stop and so that we can all go home. Pan, are, are you sure about this? Uh, please don't cry, sweetie. I think you should listen to her, Gohan, because she's right, Piccolo went on to appear by tapping Gohan on the shoulder. Going the extra mile and ending Lord Gardox wouldn't be the way, especially if he's already defeated, Piccolo continues. Doing that won't bring us any closer to the peace that we've been fighting for this entire time, and so it'll only serve to drag you down to his level if you go and beat him to death, and so I think he's learned his lesson here. Now just let it go, Gohan. Your daughter is right. True strength lies in showing mercy to those who went and showed you none, especially when it's moments like these that count. As Gohan went on to then look back down by then responding, well in that case, consider this game of yours, this three stages of hell challenge over, God of Destruction. Do you understand? You got what you asked for and wanted to see out of me, and so our score is settled, understood? As Gardox then went on to look up by then responding, y You got lucky, and you know it, but yes, fine then, so now g get off of me, Saiyan, and I won't go and tell you again. Good, and so now consider this mercy, Destroyer. Now let this be a reminder to never come anywhere near my family, Gohan says, nor even think about ever putting any of them in harm's way ever again. Do you understand? As Pan went on to then also chime in, I really wish that things were different, Mr. Green, because I really did see you as a friend. But when you started to attack my Papa and Uncle Piccolo, that was when you hurt me as a friend and made me really sad. With Gardox responding, y You really considered me as your actual friend? Okay, could someone go and tell me on just what the hell is going on around here and why in the world Goku's son is fighting a god of destruction within my universe without my approval? And I also want to know on how Lord Gardox remained in my universe without my knowledge, Beerus continues, as well as is telling me on just what the heck this beast form is that the boy is wielding, with Gohan then responding, I honestly never would have wanted for things to end like this, but you left us with no other choice, and so now let it be known that not all grudges have to be vindicated because sometimes you just have to let it go. And those haunting words that had brought you so much pain throughout your time, Gohan continues, should be buried and forgotten about, and so now leave us all alone and go back home to where you belong, Lord Gardox. I'm done here. And although you were stronger than me, it was like you yourself had said that sometimes strength isn't the only thing that wins you the day. In which as soon as Angel Vodka was then shown having to help Gardox up was when Angel Vodka then went on to respond, come now my lord, let us uphold the end of your deal and take our business back within Universe 15 for it wouldn't be wise to try and continue to engage against the mortal while in such a vulnerable condition with Gardox responding, N no now you wait right there, Saiyan. You will not turn your back on me and walk away without me having to address what it was that you just said. And so now stay right there because I have a few things that I want to say to your face. And so now I'll admit that even though you were able to best me in battle, a feat that I deemed impossible for any mere mortal to achieve, you and I both know that it was because 
because of that bizarre and strange surge of power that you channeled onto the surface that had resulted in your victory over me, Saiyan. However, your choice to spare me despite every reason for vengeance is perplexing to say the least, but my hatred for Beerus had blinded me from the truth in realizing that you were telling the truth this entire time, Gardox continues, and for what it was that you did, I just want you to know that without that power that you displayed which was shown jumping in and out, you never would have beaten me and deep down you know that you can't, but I do owe one of you an apology for dragging you into this when I should have kept you out of this this entire time, and that person is you, little one, Gardox continues. My actions during our battle in leveraging you to gain the upper hand wasn't the right call to make, but I only did it because of how badly I wanted to destroy your father and get back at Beerus for the cold and hurtful words that he said about me, and so I allowed for my anger to get the better of me, and to be honest, Gardox went on to then bow towards Pan by responding, my life as a god of destruction has been a lonely one, devoid of the connections of what it ever means to have a real friend to play with, and so I am sorry for lying to you and trying to use you as a weapon against your father when I did, and so I hope that you may accept my apology and that maybe one day you and I could actually be friends, Gardox continues, and as for you, I offer you my hand in respect, Gardox went on to address Gohan by responding, as well as offering a truce between us, but I just want you to know that you and I will battle again, so you may have won the day, but I will be back for you and I will best you, even if that strange power that you showcased were to return, because I will come back and I will come back stronger than I am now, and so you have my respect, with Gohan responding, now I'm not really sure on whether or not you're actually being truthful here, but assuming that you are, then let bygones be bygones, and so I'll accept your words for what they are and take you up on your comments, but understand that this will never, and I mean never, go and happen again. And so as long as you understand this and understand that I will do whatever I need to do in order to protect the people that I love, then let this be a truce between us then, God of Destruction. Wait a second, and just what exactly is that in your hand right there, with Gardox then revealing, darn, and here I wanted to play one last prank on you before I went and took my leave, but I guess I'll have to be a little more sneaky next time. But fair play, Saiyan, as Pan went on to then chime in, you were gonna zap my papa with that little buzzer you showed me earlier, now were you? I used to do that on my papa all the time! Yeah, well, maybe next time I'll go and try something new on him, with Gohan then responding, one thing before you go is what about your grudge with Lord Beerus, Gohan questions? Are you still hell-bent on getting back at him over what he said about you or what, with Gardox then having to leap on up by responding, I still don't like that loud mouth, but we'll go and call it even for now. You've proved your standing to me, and so for what it's worth, my issues with Beerus will be handled at a later time, Gardox went on to glance on over at Beerus by responding. Now, I don't know what it is that I'm looking at, but there appears to be something different about Beerus when compared to how he was shown before, Gardox went on to then add. But maybe it's just me. However, I see you looking at me from over there, Beerus. And so I want you to know that this mortal just got lucky and nothing more. Do you understand? And so even though him and I may have resolved our issues, me and you, however, still have a score to settle. So consider this day to be a lucky one for you. And so now let's hurry it up and leave this universe at once, Vodkel. In which moments before both Angel Vodko and God of Destruction Gardox were then shown having to head back into Universe 15 was when Gardox then went on to continue, You have quite the potential within you, mortal, but we'll see on just how good you really are the next time I see you. But in the meantime, thank you for accepting my notions and for actually considering me to be your friend, Pan. To which as Gardox and Vodka were then shown having to leave with Gohan Piccolo and Pan now shown having to stare up was when Gohan then went on to chime in, what a very strange but yet very sinisterly sneaky destroyer that Gardox was, but I'm glad that this is all over and done with because I never want to go and experience that ever again. And so now what were you thinking out there, Pan? Don't ever go and jump in the middle of a battle like that, Gohan went on to then respond. You could have been seriously hurt, Pan, with Piccolo chiming in. Relax, Gohan, you can't falter for wanting to go and help, especially since that God of Destruction was already knocked loopy after you had him pinned
pin down and onto the ground and so it was the right call for Pan to go and make out there when she did as an annoyed Beerus then went on to respond all right the three of you have some explaining to do because I was actually in the middle of something very important and you all went and ruined what I had going on with Whis and so now you're not going anywhere until I am able to get some more answers out of you and find out about just what the heck that was all about and so now before I go and finish what it was that I was doing you better start talking as it was only right then and there now during that moment where the Beyond Dragon Ball Super story of the resurrected fallen gods of destruction the universe 15 saga manga chapter finale then comes to a close now actually I'll go and take it from here as I do want to go as far as to address something with all of our dear viewers at the moment as before I go and give you the following information if you aren't already a member of Unreal's Patreon community then you are truly missing out on so much without you even knowing as not only is the next episode already on the page but if you want to support all of the content that you see and gain access to tons of exclusives along the way then we do encourage for you all to become a members of our Patreon community today for we will link it all down in the description box below and pinned comment section now although the battle involving our heroes was by no means an easy one for them to wage especially Gohan since he was the one whom Lord Gardox had taken the most interest in you can make no mistake about the fact that if it were not for this strange and unusual power that Gohan was shown wielding during the moments where he needed it the most then I have no doubt in my mind that he would have more than likely had been destroyed without it but our story is far from over because there is still so much more that waits for you that has yet to be told and so you do not want to miss out on what is about to happen coming up next so we hope that you all enjoyed today's video as before you leave do make sure to give this video a thumbs up by smashing that like button on your way out as well as subscribing to Unreal Int Gaming's channel in case you are new around here. We thank you all for watching and hope you all have a wonderful day everyone as we'll see you all in the next one. Hello! Did you know that you can stay up to date with the latest Dragon Ball content by simply subscribing to Unreal Int Gaming? Also, don't forget to follow on these social media platforms, you sexy son of a bitch. Roshi! Silent Cell, me and the fans are having a moment. That's right. I know what you want. Extra long, thick Dragon Ball content. Quality reviews with flawless editing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You dirty bitch. Roshi, the fuck? God damn it, I need them to subscribe, Cell. And we're demonetized. Yeah, screw it. Let's cut to the video.